Hey everyone, Cynix here, and year four of Chroma Core is finally complete. And man, it was a great one, it was exciting, it was fun, so of course we're gonna take a big look back at all of the stuff that happened in this year's art contest. So first off, once again, we had a huge turnout of participants. The entry phase where people make their little cadets to be in the potential running for the contest went great. Again, we had nearly 1,500 for I think the second or third year in a row. Uh, so it's holding pretty steady, which is great to see because I don't know if I could handle too many more people, but I'm pretty okay with this amount. We had a ton of standouts, which I'll show you a few of right now. And uh, man, it was quite an impressive uh, little crop of entries this year. So that was exciting. It's exciting to see all the people growing year after year, all of their skills just kind of getting better and better and so many familiar names as well as so many brand new names. Um, but yeah, there were a just ridiculous amount of good entries. And like will be the theme for all of this video, I highly strongly recommend if you get a chance to go in to the server. The server is now officially in dormant mode. All of the festivities are over, but nonetheless, it's a great time to get in here and take a look at some of the art that was made in depth. You can take a look at all of the entries, all of the cadets, uh, all of the information about their social media stuff and all of that stuff. Highly encouraged because I won't be able to go over every video, every bonus content, every amazing thing that got made. And trust me, there are some amazing things you're going to want to go into the server to look at. Um, but yeah, I think I'll just leave that up to you because we have about an hour worth of animation that was made this year. So obviously I can't show you all of that, um, but we'll get to that and I'll give you a little rundown of what to expect. But just keep in mind, highly recommended. Uh, that you have maybe the server open while you watch this video, or at the very least, just go check it out whenever you have free time. There's so much good art. If you like art, go look at good art because, man, you can spend forever just browsing through all the amazing art that was created in just a little bit over the course of one month. So, uh, yeah, lots and lots and lots of beautiful, amazing talented artwork just going on in here. But uh, this year, uh, we didn't have team captains. As you may know, the theme was overgrowth. And if you didn't know, I'll just go over it real fast, which means the main idea that we're going for in terms of the contest aspect is I'm just gonna have a ton of cadets and we're gonna call them saplings. So we're gonna have a ton of saplings from all of the entries um, and I'm gonna be picking 42 saplings to start with. Uh, and I had some help picking these. I had Ahmed Aldori come by and help out. I had some help from some of the other former people. Couldn't quite get Steven Spot, but modern day James came around to help us out, the former winner from last year. Um, and it was nice to have them helping me pick because there were so many to go through, trying to select even 40 out of the just ridiculous number of great artists is a no easy task. So aside from Ahmed and uh, Modern Day James, I also had some other people pick random uh, saplings. I had Sykra pick one. I had some community members such as Tressy pick one. Just a little bit, a little bit of spread out um, kind of picking going on this year. But nonetheless, we got a really nice selection of different saplings. So let me just go through the whole list. I'm not gonna share the stream where we picked them because that would take too long, but I'm just gonna read out the whole list of saplings that got chosen to participate in the boot camp daily challenges. We had Hakuna Matata, Slime Slugger, Kali, Naka, Odin, Shum, Smick, Huben, Snow, Henny, Iris Rossell, Returning Cadet, Hume, Gerpel, another returning person, De Half, Andre, Tavik, Blablab, Drawkey, T Ted, Sabi, who's been in it for three years, Nijimin, P. 
PK, Sunny Seaway, Yu Yu Yuan, H Jory, or I guess H Joy, Edward Traden, Fishines, Kettle Pig, who is a purely 3D artist, Ringarune, Ophelia, Gulapa, Cambing, Josie, Alto, Jorts, Masali, Elidin, Ari Kranz, Returning Cadet Stores, Diego No, Kuzalan, and Hack Arts. So woof, that was a lot of names to list off and hopefully you got a look at them all right there. Once again, strongly recommended you go into the server and check out the sapling info in the bootcamp uh, just to get a link to each of their Instagrams or portfolio social media stuff. Uh, you'll definitely find some new favorites to follow. All right, so that was the selection process. And for the bootcamp this year, we will be doing a much quicker elimination process, which man, it's gonna get stressful. It's gonna be difficult. It was hard on both the saplings and myself to constantly be cutting people every single day. Uh, but just because we have so many saplings, we're gonna need to be pruning a lot of them. So every day we'll be pruning, you know, a couple, maybe a few, maybe just one, um, but definitely a lot and it's rough. But uh, I guess without talking about it too much, let's just get in to the daily assignments. For this first assignment, in the spirit of overgrowth, we have the challenge of trying to keep growing instead of cutting cadets. Um, so each of the saplings is making a fan art of one of the potential saplings that did not get in. So one of the entries that did not get in, uh, they're drawing fan art of it. And the top four fan arts will all bring forth that character that is depicted into the saplings to bring us to a grand total of 46 saplings, which is a lot. So anyway, we had tons of good entries by everyone um, and um, amazing stuff all around. And if you haven't looked at the channel and Discord, I recommend checking it out because they are extremely, extremely good. There's tons of good stuff in all of these um, and I'm kind of blown away. Um, so anyway, we had some animations going on. Those were extremely good. We had some full on 3D renders. We had some exciting other types of animation. Um, and uh, just a lot of little animations and some full on movies, um, some larger scale animations by Eloden and by Naka. Um, so those were all really good. Yes, exactly. Look at them, they're great. Um, so that being said, it was very difficult, but I have picked my four winners uh, and I'm just gonna announce them right now. So uh, winner number one, maybe I'm biased, who knows? Uh, but I'm gonna go with Naka. For the first one. I was just, you know, this is so ambitious. I like it. It's great. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just impressed by the amount of work. So that means that double is officially joining the ranks of the saplings. Pig number two, uh, a little, looks like, feels like a big nepotism pick, but I can't deny the art. Um, and that is by Sabi. Sabi picked Spider Layer, who has already competed a bunch. So boo, boo at returning to this. So much nepotism. But nonetheless, this is just very cute. And um, I don't know, you, you gotta have, you gotta have some cute stuff like this in there. So uh, congrats to Sabi for bringing in Spider Layer and uh, congrats on Spider Layer third time competing uh the next pick uh we got so many good ones so many delightful ones um but i'm actually gonna go with do 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 so many good ones uh we're gonna go with ophelia why not um another kind of animated thing but i just think it looks great it looks fun i enjoy it i like the art um, it's distinct and it feels pretty good. Uh, so congratulations to Trout for also becoming a sapling. Guys, there's only one more pick left. Uh, and honestly, this was the toughest one to decide because uh, I'm gonna be honest, uh, there were a lot that I was gonna pick and I just got to get narrowed down. 
And this is the heartbreaker pick because a lot of hearts will be broken, I know. Um, but I've actually decided to go with the half and Gerg. So the half, congrats. Um, I just thought it was very clean, very nice, uh, very stylish depiction of that cadet. Um, so congratulations to Gerg for also joining the roles of the saplings. Great stuff all around. Congrats to all the winners. Um, and uh, we'll move on to the next assignment. <laughs> so assignment number two was our environment assignment, the first real test of uh, all of their skills because right up until now, they've only been judged on their character designing skills, but now we're throwing them in the deep end with some environments. So this first environment prompt was inverted jungle. So we had a lot of good entries, but sadly we're gonna have to take away the bottom three. The bottom three saplings will be pruned today. But to quickly just look through these, um, we had a lot of very amazing pieces of art, a lot of interesting interpretations of what inverted means, sometimes just opposite in so many different ways. Um, and I'm liking the artistry uh, that I'm seeing, a lot of good color palettes. I feel like everyone's sense of color is ridiculously good. Some fun concepts. Uh, some are a little bit rough, like I'm not sure if this one feels inverted in any fashion, but it, it is an environment technically and you know there's some minor issues here and there like uh, perhaps this one while being adorable it's pretty light on the environment but you could make a case that it is reflecting a jungle and therefore it's inverted and uh, the tricky part will be trying to pick who has to go because of it but let me just mention a couple delightful things uh, Andre made this wonderful comic that I absolutely love. Naka, of course, always an amazing artist going out of the box for once, out of the square of it all. And some good illustrations, some wonderful, I would say Spider-Verse inspired art, uh, but everyone's getting so good at art. You can't deny that, that the amount of art talent is on a whole other level. Um, this was one of my top favorites for sure. So was this one, probably my favorite animation. Just just look at that. Just look how good it is. It's amazing. So tons of good stuff. We even had a full on 3D animation. It looks like stop, stop motion, but it's a, just a 3D animation. I have a little plant walking through a forest of animals. Um, a little inversion there, which was a popular uh, way to invert things, you know, a leaf person inside a animal forest. Uh, so a lot of good stuff happening there. Once again, just amazing art across the board from top to bottom, uh, which is, or bottom to top, I guess we should say, in this inverted case. <laughs> My favorite of this round was Ringaruna with this one. Now there were so many favorites technically, but I decided that this one felt the most just uh, on, on point, you know, if I was just art directing and said, hey, I need an inverted jungle environment for something. I uh, really like that one. Great colors, great concept. And there's just a ton of other delightful ones as well. Josie killing it. Um, great concept here, you know, with the reflected life. Little, I don't even, should I play this? Yeah, that's all you need to see. Don't worry about the rest. Um, and yeah, just good. good amazing stuff happening everywhere. I can't play this whole video, but you should definitely come in the Discord and watch it. It's like a full on animated TV series. Anyway, I do have to pick some to go out. So uh, sadly, I'm gonna have to say, we're gonna lose Hack Arts today. Uh, I think you just bit off more than you can chew. Hack Arts had probably my favorite cadet out of all the cadets, uh, definitely my top three cadets, um, but it's it's just a little you know kind of felt feels very unfinished compared to what everyone else did so um sadly we're losing one of my favorite character designers of this year hack arts and uh i think the next one is just going to be uh it's gonna be gerg uh it's just a little underwhelming in some of the compositional ideas everything's a little bit too spaced in their own things so they're doesn't quite sell the depth and doesn't quite, I understand what it's going for, but I feel like it was, it's a little, 
a little weaker than some of the rest in terms of the uh, presentation of it. Um, so sadly, I really liked what Gerg was doing, but I have to have to make those tough cuts. And the third one uh, is uh, really a battle between, you know, do we go with concept? Do we go with art? But sadly, we're gonna lose PK on this one. I'm sorry, sorry PK. I've definitely enjoyed seeing your art, but we're, I guess the ducks win, you know? So yeah, three losses. Sad to see them go. Very strong artists, but yeah, let's uh, move along. All right, so today's assignment is a prop design. Uh, it's the mystical lantern of the Dryad Queen. Um, or just a fancy nature themed lantern. So uh, prop design stuff, we're really just looking for good shapes, good design ideas. And sadly, we're gonna get rid of the bottom two today. So uh, we have a lot of entries, a lot of good stuff. Uh, you can obviously glance through them all on your own time. So we got some that are comics, some that are full on 3D animations like this one. It's casting little light of butterflies dancing. Lovely stuff by Kettle Pig. Amazing 3D work going on here. So aside from, you know, some of my favorites like Naka and uh, that one by Ari Kranz, uh, I think my second favorite one was probably this one by Alto, but I decided that my first favorite uh, probably did have to go to this lovely design by Edouard. Um, just, just some fun shapes. Just felt really nice. Felt like it encapsulated that slightly mythological, like, dryad vibe. Um, so because of that, it just felt like it, it really hit the, hit the right spot. Uh, so definitely great job, Edward. And sadly, we do have to pick two to get pruned, um, which is never easy because I like all these artists. But, uh, the first one I'm going to be pruning is Huben. I'm sorry, Huben. Uh, just felt a little less exciting, both on the uh, silhouette and on some of the aspects of the design qualities. The other one I'll be cutting today, and this is uh, very, very tough to decide. Mm, now, I'm, now I'm having a second thought at this last minute. But no, I'm actually gonna cut Henny. I love Henny, I love their work. I just feel like this one, it doesn't quite have as much effort put into it. You know, it's a little off balance. It's a little underdeveloped. I know it's pretty because it has a glow and some nice colors, but uh, it's, de it's definitely a little bit simpler and underdeveloped conceptually than the rest. So let's see what happens in the next day. For today's assignment, we had a creature design and the creature design was nice and simple. It was Filbert, the fluffiest dinosaur. Today we will be pruning two of the saplings. So get ready for more difficult pain as we keep going forward. But ignoring these uh, space wasters here at the top, we had some, you know, lovely cool stuff by Andre and others. And uh, of course we gotta play this. Okay, never mind. We shouldn't be playing this. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know what? Never mind. We don't need to play that. Uh, <laughs> wait, hold on. Hold on. Okay. Just gotta get that sniff in there. Um, so we had a lot of good entries, good different styles, lots of different interpretations of everything. Uh, my winner for today uh, was actually Kali. Kali had this lovely little animation that felt both cute, both fun, and a little bit of scientific. So it had a little bit of all of the different kind of places you could have taken it. Um, but I feel like it combines all that stuff with nice presentation, uh, and it's good. Solid, solid, good piece. I think a lot of these look like they would be great in, you know, any number of video game franchises or anything like that. Lots of good stuff all throughout the day. Some more realistic, some more just fun and cutesy. Uh, definitely some quality across the board. Um, so, you know, little animations are still prevalent. A lot of animations. This, this one's evil. A lot of people were just having their fluffy dinosaurs just eat cynics, me. Uh, but yeah, that's fine. I can take it. Um, uh, then we have... Are you ugly on purpose? <laughs> oh, that was, that was sad. Um, uh, but anyway, we have all that stuff going on. Um, and in the meantime, uh, I did like them a lot, but I did have to pick 
two people to get prunes. I mean, I guess, okay, never mind. We got to show this. <laughs> Whatever this is. Uh, and I really like this one as well. Definitely top three for Tabak. Um, so definitely, definitely recommend checking some of these out if you have time. Of course, you always want to check out Elodin's if you have time. Um, but in order to prune a couple, uh, choices had to be made, unfortunately. Uh, so my first prune of the day is going to go to Diego now. Uh, just felt a little a little more rushed, a little less developed than the rest. I don't hate the concept, but presentation was a little messed up. Out of, out of perspective a little bit, but also the shape dynamics kind of repeat a lot, and it just didn't have a good focal punch. I promise I'm not trying, but I keep eliminating all of my favorite cadets. All of the ones I picked from the cadet draft, I just keep having, I don't, I don't know why. And the other one is also just gonna make everyone sad. I think I have to cut Sunny today. Uh, I didn't hate this one. Once again, they were just really strong across the board, but I, the readability was just the issue. It was more of an art, you know, an art aspect. Um, like I kind of mentioned, the readability gets a little bit lost, gets a little bit chaotic, just needed some editing, needed some cleaning up. Uh, we also, weirdly enough, we also have a leg that is in the distance that is somehow sitting closer to us. So perspective, uh, shape dynamics got a little bit off, but all right, and that's gonna do it for this, this prompt for today. Today's entry was the graffiti word art challenge of this year's Chromacore. Uh, the only qualification for it is it just needs to have word art related to either your name, your art name, or your uh, cadet's name. You can pick one of those and just do some word art for it. I will only be pruning one sapling today, but uh, nonetheless, you know, look at all these absolute trash entries we got here. Um, just wasting space and time doing all this nonsense, um, but eventually, 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 we will find some actual entries. So we had a lot of nice ones, actually. I actually liked a lot of the ones we saw. People are getting better at their balances and all of that stuff. Tavix was quite good. Throw this in a video game. And there's a lot of kind of nice ones. Ed Edward did a lovely lightning effect, by the way. Definitely one of the strong ones for today. Um, very cool. Uh, and there was a lot of actually really good stuff. Uh, so I was surprised. So there's, you know, interesting entries across the board, cool animations going on. And uh, let's see, neat, and then, um, this one's Alara. The Cadet Alara, actually an ambigram. It's the same upside down, always tricky to do. Uh, my winner for today's challenge, it could have gone to a few different ones, but I decided that Ophelia's, uh, with just its, its explosion of untraditional shapes and colors and everything, it just feels really good. So going with that one for today, and there they are in the chat, smiling happily. <laughs> and there's some other stuff. Uh, Double actually has two different words when you read it. The cadet name on one side and Double's name on the other side, which is cool. Um, so there's a lot of fun stuff like that. Good a little pixel art here by Gerpel. Um, and a lot of good stuff. So uh, very strong, very fun entries mixed in here all kinds of cool, interesting things. So aside from the winner, be sure to watch the anime, by the way. But aside from the winner being Ophelia, I do have to pick my one prune of the day. And there's, there's a couple weak ones. It, it's tough, but I think, I think the pruning today is gonna go for Shum. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to prune this one. Uh, I just feel like it was a little too straightforward and like, somewhat like not as, you know, ambitious, I guess is the main problem. I feel like it was just a little, a little less ambitious than the rest. I did like Urkel, a very cute little uh, slug of a cadet. So let's keep moving on. All right, so for assignment number six, uh, this is going to be our first guest prompt of the year. And we were lucky enough to get a prompt once again by Zach Retz. 
And once again, it is a mildly cat-themed prompt. Uh, the prompt this time is herding the cats, which is a great illustration idea, in my opinion. It's going to be a narrative narrative illustration. Um, and by the way, if you never followed Zach Retz, he does amazing work. So definitely check him out on Instagram or anywhere else. Uh, but yes, we will be pruning two saplings on this entry. So uh, let's just give it a quick look through down here. We have some people literally herding their own cats. <laughs> um, and all kinds of fun little things happening there. Um, but uh, we do have some actual entries. Uh, H-Joy just made this one extra with Ring of Cadet because they also made another entry as well. Uh, but anyway, we have some great stuff to share today. We got Kuzalons, a uh, lovely composition, beautiful colors. Iris also had some lovely style and technique going on. Uh, George, absolutely adorable with this one. Um, so many Urkel references also. I'm seeing them everywhere. Uh, but yeah, these are lovely. Great colors, great ideas, great execution. Um, so tons of great stuff happening. Gurpel with this lovely pixel art. Edward had another amazing piece with a little bit of animation thrown in. Some lo-fi vibes for you all. Um, and sadly... Andre did withdraw from today. So they have resigned their sapling position. Um, but man, Andre is just such a strong artist. Uh, sad to see them go because I just love looking forward to their entries each day. But hopefully they'll still make some entries, follow along, hang out, do all the fun stuff. But then, you know, back to all these just amazing entries. Fashines, a great idea. <laughs> so many, so many cat herding characters. Uh, Gulapa did a little tribute to Devil's Cadet. A little thing going on there. And Naka had this absolutely amazing piece with so many good little Easter eggs going on all throughout this thing. Uh, don't look at that, YouTube. Uh, I guess don't look at any of it, YouTube. YouTube, be, be chill, YouTube. Be good, YouTube. There's nothing, nothing interesting going on there. Um, and then Smick had this one. Uh, we got Kali over here. Once again, cute ideas. Lots of Easter eggs today. And just tons of Easter eggs. Um, T Ted, so cute. Killing me with how cute these are. Uh, Snow, lovely color palette. Alto, a little bit of extra, once again, fun Easter eggs and a good concept. Uh, just, just, just tons of great stuff today. Kettle Pig, back to 3D, uh, back to making amazing little 3D cute renders. Uh, Stores, great. This is not their name. This is Slime Slugger. I don't know why the Borat references are coming in today. Uh, Camping and Devil, just, just good stuff all around. Uh, one of my favorite assignment crops we've ever had. I just, I've really enjoyed looking at these just from top to bottom. Ring of Rune used it as a chance to do a little lore for their cadet, which is great. Uh, and sadly, we also are pruning Ari Kranz. Well, technically they are self pruning. Uh, they just haven't, don't have the time to continue, which is perfectly okay. We have certainly loved having Ari Kranz in this competition and they've been doing amazing stuff. Be sure to give both Ari Kranz and Andre a follow if you haven't already done so. Um, but yeah, great artists, great people. Um, and man, H-Joy, this is one of my favorite art pieces of the day for sure. Just beautiful artistry um, and Sabi as well. I One of my favorite Sabi pieces. <laughs> this is so good. I love the drawing going on here and some good references as well. Uh, Trout had this really more a darker one, but also quite good. Ophelia had this lovely idea of a cucumber with all the cats spiraling into a herd around it. Uh, I love that idea. Draw key killing it with the colors and lighting. Um, just it was such a strong day for everyone. I feel like everyone was uh just really nailing it. So that one was great as well. Odin wound up being my winner of the day. I just absolutely love the execution on this. Uh, it just looks lovely. It's a different idea than I would have thought of, but it has a lot of good narrative elements. 
Uh, and I just think it it's great. It's just a, just a great piece. Josie going for the, the classic. The true herding of the cats with the can opening. Um, a little Bloodborne reference on this one. Jermaine. <laughs> and an Urkel reference. Uh, Spider Lair really killed this one as well. Just a great idea and so expressive. Such a good piece. Um, ready to be made into a kid's book. Um, and of course the Elodan anime series, which you'll just have to watch on your own. Come to our server. Come hang out. Come watch everything. Misali, also amazing. I love this one. It has so many little details. I guess I should open it because it's vertical. Um, just cats happening everywhere. The little mouse nicks, little mouse cynics hanging out on the sink. All the cats are terrified, trying to get away. Terrified of little mouse nicks. And of course, no one's more terrified uh, than this character right here. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I love it. I love it. Amazing day. For all you Chainsaw Man fans, here's a good little reference for you as well. Um, so, you know, thank you, cat herding reference. You know, I guess we're done with cats for this year. So we'll see you next year, cats. And I guess we'll move on to the next day because we already prune two people. Yeah, we're not going to prune any extras. This is different format than last year. So Borat, not Borat. <laughs> Andre and Ari Kranz uh, have pruned themselves, so we're moving forward, um, and let's let's keep it going. Today's assignment is going to be coming to us from guest prompt giver Yu Ming. Yu Ming is obviously an amazing artist. Does some crazy good control over light and color. You've probably seen them on social media at some point. Amazing art all around um and they gave us a character design assignment and the prompt of that was a celestial nomad with their wondrous cloak so it'll be a character design with a little bit of a uh, added element of having a cloak in there anyway looking down through all of these entries we once again had an amazing set of 36 different entries so there was all kinds of different ideas and crazy stuff happening. Some really good costumey kind of cloak things. Some, a lot of stars, a lot of celestial kind of interior linings of capes and the cloaks. Uh, so that seemed to be the most common theme. You know, maybe it's a portal, maybe it's a transparent PNG, uh, whatever it is. It's, you know, it's interesting cape stuff, but a lot of good character designs, a lot of strong silhouettes going around. Uh, the ideas were actually quite diverse aside from, you know, the celestial nature of just star stuff happening. Spider layer went galactic with this one, just massive in scale and craziness. And T Ted, of course, did about the cutest thing you could do for this assignment. <laughs> just lovely colors, very happy colors, um, lovely stuff. Uh, Edward still making cool animations and amazing shape designs. Uh, Slime Slugger did some crazy kind of surreal stuff uh, that I appreciated. And overall, I think this was just an amazing set. Amazing set of entries. Really, really good stuff. My winner for today was actually Kuzalan with this entry. Um, just a uh, Amazing head design, face design, character design going on in there. Uh, very, a little surreal with the, the river kind of forming into the, the cloak. Um, but I just, I thought it was just great. I love the color palette. Uh, Drawkey had an amazing one. Uh, they were all honestly quite amazing. Double really came in strong. This feels like proper 80s concept art. Uh, really good. Uh, Sabi had a delightful one. Uh, probably my second place was Tavik, who, oof, could have been first place, because look at them, look at that color and design. Uh, amazing stuff right there. And, you know, just strong pieces across the board. Okay, so, uh, sadly, uh, one of the ones we're getting rid of today is Hume. Now, Hume is an amazing artist, and uh, I absolutely love Hume as an artist. Does amazing stuff. One of my favorite people to follow on social media for their art. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, while this is technically a celestial nomad, 
uh, it's, it's fan art, and they didn't do an actual character design, which would feel a little bad to eliminate someone else with that here, so just a little touch of that, but, you know, there's some feet there, Ahume's parting gift to you all. Enjoy some free feet on main. So, we are pruning Hume today, and sadly, I had to prune one more, and the second pruning is a painful one, but I think I'm gonna go with Iris on this one. Not bad in any which way, I just, it felt a little less wild than some of the other ones. Aside from this amazing cloak, which I absolutely love, I just felt like some of the other elements didn't feel like they were working as well as they could. So, that'll do it for today, and uh, we'll be moving on. All right, assignment number eight comes to us from Laura Price, obviously another YouTuber, great environment artist, and they give us an environment assignment, and that is to make Cyberpunk Palm Springs Neighborhood, which honestly sounds like a pretty fun idea. I've been to Palm Springs a lot when I was a kid, and uh, it's the hottest place I've ever been to. It's like 120 degrees there today. We got a lot of good entries, but right away, uh, yeah, we, we do have uh, people dropping out. So Fishines decided uh, that they can no longer compete. It was Fishines last day. Uh, they have a con this weekend, so, you know, they just had to had to drop out. But yeah, Fashin's amazing artist, brought a lot of good stuff every year to Chromacore time, and I think we'll probably still be bringing some good stuff as a follow-along, uh, hopefully, hopefully. But we had all kinds of good stuff. Edward made this amazing little cyber psychosis Urkel exploding in, in our cyber bomb springs, which is amazing, honestly. Um, really good stuff there. Uh, Alto was actually my winner for today. Um, did this lovely little environment during the day. You got the nighttime version, um, and it just feels like a nice cyberpunk Palm Springs kind of vibe. Uh, Nuevo Palm Springs, I should say. So, uh, really nice stuff there. Uh, there's all kinds of amusing different ideas for fun entries, all that kind of stuff happening. All these silly little things, retirement people. Some great colors. These colors are so pretty. I feel like if you bring in the right pastel tones, it's gonna look so good for like a cyberpunk desert community. Lots of good stuff happening, lots of good colors across the board. Uh, I definitely enjoyed it. I wasn't sure how people would handle it. It's a difficult assignment. I'm just gonna be clear on that. I think it's pretty tricky, but people like H-Joy just nailed it, you know? Look at that control over shapes. Perfect light shapes and shadow shapes happening. Uh, really enjoyable stuff. Uh, great, great job there. Um, and I feel like a lot of people are just getting better and better at environments. Cambings, really good. Spider layer, absolutely destroyed this one. Really good stuff there. Of the little neon cactuses and everything. It's perfect. And Kettle Pig had a animation, of course. A quick 3D model with a little bit of nighttime day to night cycle and a lovely little flying car coming through there. And then we had, you know, our regular Sabi Trout. Odin, great piece there. Um, and uh, it's gonna be an easy day for, for pruning because uh, Hakuna Matata decided to drop out as well. They're just burnt out. I know, it's, it's a tough, grueling thing to have to do finished art every day, especially when they're doing things that are out of the comfort zone. It was great getting to know Hakuna Matata's art and seeing their art. Um, but yeah, two prunes, which means I don't have to prune anyone today. So I am relieved, I am happy. I am enjoying my time without having to cut anyone. I can just look at all the pretty art and have a great time. Uh, double add this fun little thing here. Ignore this. This is not a reference to anything that you should uh, be worried about. Um, Ringarune, always great to see. And yeah, just, just good stuff. Drawkey also definitely nailed it. Really good one there. Um, and to half, a little unfinished, but some great shapes. Um, but in the meantime, uh, yeah, more, just stop it. It's too many feet. Okay. But regardless, uh, that's going to do it for this assignment. We'll see what we get on tomorrow's assignment. 
So today's assignments came to us from Peter Jablonski, one of my favorite artists, um, Nick Panimski on Instagram. Definitely, definitely, please check out his art. I assure you, it's the things that inspire me. So if you're inspired by my art, just go to, go to the sources that inspire me. It's a lot more efficient that way. But anyway, uh, this will be a creature design, and it was a giant penguin enemy for a Dark Souls game. So that was the prompt that Peter gave, and uh, I love it. I think it's a great prompt. So, uh, obviously, Benjamin's a good reference to make. Uh, sadly, Benjamin is not in our follow-alongs this year, but uh, we do we do forever uh, keep Benjamin in our hearts. But moving on past all the joke entries into the real entries, uh, we did have, I would say, an amazing crop of entries. So we had some that were very kind of darker, disturbing. We had some that were just really playing off of the, the Dark Souls uh, tropes and memes. Uh, we had some that were, once again, Edward still keeping it alive with the little animations of everything. Very creepy animation. And then just tons of amazing, diverse designs. So I, you know, love the rendering on that. Love the shapes on this one. Um, just some really amazing stuff. Naka, of course, doing amazing things. Uh, great, you know, values there and shapes and everything. Um, also, just Gulab, the head design on this one, the armor, oh, it's so good. Just just fun, diverse entries that I really, really loved looking through. So, definitely a great day for art. Um, Kuzalan is slowly transforming into a human AI, um, and I'm, you know, I'm here to watch that. We're, we're all here to enjoy Kuzalan's transformation into AI. Um, so, the winner today was actually Ring of Rune. Uh, it could have gone many different ways because they were all quite, quite good, um, like I said. But this one, the Penguin of Thunder with just the shape dynamics going on and just the presentation, I just love it. I just feel like this feels like a ready-made boss design, a character, enemy design, whatever you want to say. Um, really enjoyable stuff. So love that a lot. Double had a great one. Odin had this, you know, just very clean, great animal rendering skill going on. Um, even Sabi got in on the creepiness on that one. Um, so tons of great stuff happening. Good things all around. Uh, DeHalf had no time today, just zero time to do anything. So all he could do was this amazing illustration. That's all he could do. Just no time, you know? Sometimes you don't have time. So all you can do is just make something awesome. Uh, it's the harsh, the harsh reality of Chromacore. Um, so that's crazy good. <laughs> um, yeah, lots, lots of fun stuff happening today. Sadly, I do still have to prune a couple entries. Um, so I'm not pruning this. I just want to look at this lighting one more time. We've had so many great artists, and now it's just getting into the point where I'm, where I'm like, I don't even know. It's getting harder and harder. How are we gonna get down to eight people? But we gotta do it, so we're just gonna carry forth, not fight it too much. I think one that I'm gonna have to prune today is Smick. I just, uh, I love Smick's art. Honestly, it's been really nice, um, but I just feel like kind of missed the mark on the uh, whole giant penguin thing, you know? So sadly, uh, Smick, we're losing today to the pruning. Um, and uh, we gotta pick one more. Um, and that one uh, will actually be Blub Lab. I like the concept and idea. I just thought it, the press, it didn't really come together. Some of the shapes are just a little too awkward. It just felt a little off balanced. That's, that's where we're at for today. We are down to 30 saplings now. Uh, and uh, we're moving on to assignment number 10. Well, we are up to assignment number 10. This is just going to be just one for me. I don't have a guest for today uh, because I didn't get many guest prompts that were prop design, industrial stuff. And we got to mix up the uh, prompts just a little bit so it's not just characters and creatures every day. So for today, we're doing prop design and specifically we're going to be making rifles or guns for our cadets. If the cadet already has a rifle, then they're making like a pistol but we're really focused on cohesive 
theming around our characters. So there were honestly some amazing entries. I really liked all the entries. Somehow H-Joy did this whole thing in under an hour. Now it does have some issues. It is a little underdeveloped, but man, it, it definitely fits the character well. Um, and we had all kinds of different entries and no point in waiting to let you know the winner of today was actually Sabi with this uh, little sidearm for their cadet. Just beautiful, simple, but you know, highly effective. Fits the character extremely well in my opinion. Then we had a whole mess of different entries, some with like really creative ideas. Tavok's character is blind, so we got like a little little stand for a little birdie, I guess, to let you know when to shoot. Um, just a lot of fun little ideas, you know, cr very creative elements across the board. Um, just, you know, for all these cute little characters, just cute little guns. For the more uh, serious characters, we got more serious guns, kind of dark magic stuff janitor guns we got you know all kinds of water gun stuff leaking out the end just you know lightning guns and pixel art guns uh more watering can stuff um so lots and lots of entries across the board also kettle pig is worth seeing full 3d for the character but you know it takes a while to unfold uh, but once we get there, like this thing, oh, it fits the character so well. The shape designs and everything. Shoots little nerf darts. Very good. Uh, Trout had an amazing idea with this obviously built around all the functionality of Photoshop. But it, it's a gun that can shoot selection. You can select someone's stuff by shooting it and just control, control, exit away. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff happening there. Odin really matching the character quite well. Love that. And a lot of these just, you know, good matchup with the character. They all feel very much like the character. You can identify the character right away. Jalki nailed it. Naka, one of the best renderings of the day. Just amazing stuff in all these details. Double as well. And of course you have to watch the anime. If you got, you got to come on the Discord and watch the anime. Uh, but anyway, after going through all of those delightful entries, uh, I do have to cut another two. I uh, gotta prune two saplings today. We gotta keep the thing moving. So, sadly, today I will be pruning Slime Slugger as one of them. Uh, the design of the gun itself just felt a little boring compared to all these crazy designs. But let me just mention that Slime Slugger did have this great idea for like basically a hand bunker because their character has a giant hand. I just love that idea. That idea is so strong on its own. Um, and oof, gotta pick one more. I think the other one, oh, this, is, this is tough, uh, but I think it's gonna be Cambing. It's mostly just because unlike a lot of the other ones, I just didn't feel the character quite as much in this one. I felt like it was a little bit weaker on incorporating the character design into it. Um, but yeah, that's that's what we had to do today. So another two prunings down. I think we're down to 28 saplings now. Uh, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. All right. Today's assignment is brought to us by our uh, previous Chroma Core team captain, Steven Zapata. You know him. You love him. Uh, definitely check his YouTube videos. Uh, but this will be an illustration. Uh, he gave us a whole a whole paragraph of a prompt, or what feels like a paragraph when you're an artist and you're not used to reading things. In the vast desert, water hangs suspended in the sky in great bubbles, tantalizingly out of reach. It never rains, they never fall. The desert dwellers must ascend to them if they want to drink. We will be pruning two saplings today. It's, uh, it's getting rough. It's been rough, but it keeps getting more and more difficult as time goes on. Okay, so... Uh, let's get past all the jokes. Uh, go watch Red Diamond Man's videos. <laughs> um, yes, ignore all these. Yep, no, nope, don't care. We'll skip that one. Ignore the hacked Naka. It's fine. Don't worry about it. But we had a ton, a ton of great illustrations today from just everything across the board. Uh, Tavik, lovely stuff. Just all kinds of different visuals, different color palettes. A lovely little animation with Urkel here using his Minecraft blocks to, uh, you know, yum, 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 get some water. Some amazing colors here by snow. Bubbles could be better, but 
that's nice. Uh, a lot of references coming in. So Gulapa did Henny's Cadet in here, lovely. There is a lovely piece by T-Ted. Just enjoying that, it feels like some straight out of like an amazing art book. Uh, Kettle Pig, still going strong with 3D, I would say. Although it's you know, maybe a little bit uh, rougher than some of the previous ones have been. My winner for today is actually Spider Layer's one. Uh, Spider Layer did an amazing job. Obviously Spider Layer has a lot of Chroma Core experience, but I, I, I see their art just continuing to grow. Compositionally, illustration stuff, looking stronger and stronger. Plenty of good shapes, plenty of ambitious illustration and perspective stuff going on. So great stuff there. A lot of good perspectives, honestly. Just, just tons of good stuff. Even the quick ones, you know, are really strong ideas and execution. Tons of good, good stuff to look at today. So definitely enjoying it. Very good. Elodin's was amazing today. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, all kinds of good stuff. Oh, that's spoilers for Elodin's, but... Uh, we had De Haf doing a little callback to Ezra, the dancing magician of years past. Old stuff. Alto had this amazing, uh, nice, emotional piece going on here, which looked great. Um, definitely one of my favorites as well. Uh, and just, yeah, just a lot of fun stuff going on. Just tons of, tons of good pieces. All right, so... Obviously, Spider Layer was my favorite, but I do have to prune two of these amazing entries, which is not going to be easy, I'm honest with you. Sorry, but sadly, I do have to prune Draw Key today. I love Draw Key, but it just wasn't quite as strong with uh, as some of the other ones going on today. <sighs> I think it's, I think I'm gonna prune Kali today. Um, I just I felt the composition was a little uh, was a little underdeveloped. Maybe the colors were a little murkier than the rest. So Kali, Draw Key, both amazing artists. They've done amazing stuff, but we'll keep moving forward. We gotta get to the end of this thing. So we'll be moving on to the next assignment. Assignment twelve comes to us from thirty nine Daff, a uh, Twitch variety streamer now they're they're an artist they do a lot of twitch stuff you might know them from twitch um but this is going to be a character assignment and the prompt is mushroom royalty we will be pruning too though so you know the, the train rolls on let's jump into some of these so we had a lot of very cool costume designs a lot of fun ideas mixing tons of different mushrooms but right off the bat it looks like i'll only be pruning one technically because nijimen did a bit of a self prune today just burnt out a little too much a little too much daily finished art uh, going on but we love Nijerman and we love all of the art they have done and uh, we look forward to letting them refill their gas tank so that we can see more art from their art journey in the future so that is there and then uh, we had all kinds of weird little little goofy little guys uh, this one by Jorts, this one by you, you want, oh, that's kind of creepy. Uh, all kinds of fun little guys, little mushroom kings and queens and uh, royalty of all sorts. Galapa had a great one today. Really like this design. Very fun to look at. Um, yes, he got Yamchud, but he'll be fine. Ophelia with some lovely line work going on, some good shapes. T-Ted, always adorable, can't hold that. H-Joy, really nice control over rendering going on here. You know, good control over shadow areas versus light areas. And some nice control over the edges as well. But I love the costume. This, this little cape thing is just amazing. It looks so good. Um, and that seems to be one of the themes of today was everyone just having amazing costumes, plenty of interesting ideas. And uh, yeah, I think overall, once again, a very strong art day. So this, once, ooh, I just love these costumes. But my winner for today was actually Kettle Pig and it's full three-dimensional glory. Uh, I love all of the little, little helper guys, the little court for the royalty. Um, just all the funny little antics they're getting into, but good personality, love the crown, uh, just like the shapes, like the general vibe, it feels lovely. So congrats to Kettle Pig. Odin, very strong piece there. 
brought back the Dryad Lantern from previous assignments. Uh, and Trout is going full on into a complete narrative arc. Uh, on the previous assignment, their cadet found the color blue from the water droplets in the sky. And now they are approaching new colors and new things, trying to regain all of their color wheel powers. Definitely one of my favorites of the day. ring a -Rooney absolutely nailed it. Hyper clean, very beautiful presentation. Lots of great stuff happening today. Fun ideas, little mushroom pizza kings and all kinds of fun stuff. Josie really hitting the Amano vibes. Um, and to have a little, a little unfinished, we could say, but some nice costume ideas. Anyway, we do have to prune one more and oof, it's, it's a tough decision because once again, as has been the case lately, uh, I don't dislike any of them. I actually quite enjoy all of the pieces. Overall, I think, I think I'll be pruning snow today though. It was just a little bit weak in the pose and the kind of some of the elements felt a little underdeveloped and underdesigned. I absolutely loved Snow's Cadet and the art I've seen from them. It's like awesome. But uh, nonetheless, we pruned our two and we shall move forward. Hello everyone, yet again, it is time for assignment 13 and with assignment 13 comes our abstract prompt of the year. Every year we've done an abstract assignment. I like them. They're kind of a little bit of a, you know, a reprieve from all of the, uh, the stress of rendering. You get to relax and render and do things. And I always enjoy it. There's always a prompt, but it doesn't matter too much. It's just to be something to maybe, maybe inspire people. And the prompt this time is the elopement of form and space. We're only going to be pruning one, so uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what goes on next. We got uh, Yu Yu Yuan going pretty, a um, little bit two dimensional, but has some circles, interesting splatters and things. Trout apparently was uh, maybe under subtle influences while making this one, um, but it's weird, it's weird and interesting. Uh, Naka went absolutely crazy with this. Uh, it starts here, you might be like, oh, well that's, that's okay, it's a thing. It has good ideas and shapes going on, but why would that be crazy? Well, this little hole it makes is gonna be going on and on throughout the other boards, throughout this board, throughout everywhere. It's just, it's making a big mess. It's just causing all kinds of chaos as we go forth. Uh, Tavik had this one, which I do like elements of it, but I'll be honest, uh, I think it could have been cropped to give a better, piece of art and george had a, had a weird one uh which you know it's interesting to say the least uh gulap had this one also a bit weird and eladin did have this one but eladin also had a very interesting anime episode but anyway we had gurpel looking pretty good with that nice pop off the page edward did an amazing animation yet again which is you can stare at this for hours. It just keeps going around and around. It's like looking at a lava lamp, but in 2D Sakuga form. Kettle Pig absolutely destroyed this one with this very nice piece of art going on here. Uh, I love that one. Uh, Naka is still is still causing chaos, even onto other boards. I'm not gonna go there right now, but it's all over the place. Sabi had a great one. It's Sabi's third time doing an abstract prompt. Stores. Looking pretty nice as well. Also had that one. T Ted did traditional stuff. It's like ink plus bubble solution plus other stuff. Um, all this chaos still going on. Kuzlan, lovely piece right here. Strong focal attention. Odin, strong focal attention. Also a lovely piece. Really enjoyed that. Double, uh, some good stuff going on there. Love that palette. Um, Misali. Lovely, just nice flow of shapes. They're like dancing together. Definitely captures the prompt, weirdly enough. Ring Rune, looking good. Spider Lair, some lovely colors going on there. A little bit landscapey, but eh, abstract enough. Uh, Ophelia, also going crazy with the colors and the different styles. 
Uh, and yeah, Nock is still going wild. H Joy decided to flip everything 45 degrees, give us a little different take on things. Nicely done. Uh, De Half had this one. Josie doing the little roast beef o tribute, and Naka finally coming to the end at the nine o'clock deadline. The winner today is actually Elodin, and I know you're thinking, well, how do I watch that? I'll tell you what, for this time, I will place the video, I will cut to the video, I will let you watch the video. Let's do this anime time. It is time, Elodin. Finally, the abstract prompt has come. Yes, you are doomed, Elodin. There is no way to make a music animation out of this. It had a nice run, but finally I will end the anime once and for all. It's time for your death, Elodin. It is over. It's pretty good. Oroa, Cornelius, now. Ooh. What? <laughs> Henshin? Episode 14. Shapeity shape shape the elopement of form and space. Ooh. Okay. Okay, getting a little weird with the enemy. I like that. But anyway, yes, Elodin absolutely destroyed that one. Really good stuff. Uh, yeah, worth sharing for sure. Now, we only have to cut one, but this is a tough day to cut one because, you know, there's it's abstract. There's a lot of fun stuff going on. Uh, Any one I cut, it's going to be, you know, breaking all sorts of hearts because, you know, there's so much stuff happening. I think the cut I will be making today, the prune... It's gonna be Gulapa. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm pruning Gulapa. It's happening. You know, hold on to your horses. Gulapa is getting pruned. I know. No, no. I can't. I can't. Happy birthday, Gulapa. I know. It's Gulapa's birthday today. So happy birthday, Gulapa. Go sit on the sidelines. All right. Well, there we go. Another assignment done. Let's move along. All right, assignment number 14 is coming to us from a guest prompt of Scott Flanders, or more specifically his son, Bastion, uh, who has given a prompt, I think, every Chroma Core so far, and they've all been quite good. Uh, so this one is going to be a uh, illustration graphic design assignment. We're trying to make a fake movie poster for a fake movie called Time Shark. Uh, that can be whatever they want, but, you know, fake Time Shark movie poster. Uh, here's Josie's. It's amazing, high quality graphic design there. Um, no, let's move down. We got actual entries somewhere. Just ignore Gulapa. Don't look. He's only, he only gets encouraged if you look at him, so don't look. We have this one by Jorts, uh, which is, I would say, has some great painting techniques. Definitely some great colors. I like the clock motif. Uh, it's pretty good. Edward did this whole animation yet again. It's like 14 for 14 animations. And it transitions into the poster, uh, which is a pretty good poster design. 
So definitely a solid one there. And no point leaving you in suspense. My winner for this day is T-Ted because just look, just look at it. Look at it, everyone. Look, look at this thing. Look at this beautiful piece of art posters that are matching. You can get both of these. T-Ted, go sell them somewhere. We can, you can put one here, one over there. They're a nice little combo. They're great, I love them. Then we had Tavik, also lovely color choices, really strong presentation there. Uh, we had Kettle Pig, Stores, once again, a lot of cool colors going on. Uh, Misali, which very cool. Once again, looks like a Leica movie or something, stop motion kind of fun stuff. Uh, so many different styles of movie, pretend movies represented. Gurpel went for a Groundhog Day spoof. It's fine. Naka had this amazing piece. I really like this. Naka just always seems to be in. I keep. I had. I don't, I don't think I've given Naka the win on any of these, but Naka's been in my top like three or four almost every single time. Sabi is sick, but still had a nice straightforward, very pleasant, very effective little movie poster. And uh, Kuzalan had a lovely piece as well, I would say. A great concept by Alto, the little little Jaws reference inside of an hourglass. Odin, maybe a little rough with the greens and stuff, but uh, all right. And Ring of Rune, absolutely killing this. Obviously a bit of a reference, got a, got a little Dune references and stuff. Uh, Time Shark. Artificial intelligence. I just love the actual look that came out of this with the shark and everything and the characters. So many good Easter eggs, so many good visuals. Uh, definitely right up there at the top with T-Ted. Um, so extremely, extremely cool stuff. I would, this would be a great poster to have too. Yu Yu Yuan, uh, fun concept, some awesome, just good stuff around Trout, Spider Lair, going for the kind of cartoon movie the half very screen print-esque love the aesthetics though very nice Eladin, which you'll never see because you have to go into the server josie had that one devil had a great great illustration uh, of the actual shark here uh, i just love that um h joy high concept stuff uh and ophelia so Obviously the winner's tea Ted. I already said that. Picking one to prune is gonna be a little bit rough uh, as we get further and further down. But I think I'm gonna be pruning Kettle Pig today, which I know coming off of a very recent win, it's rough, but uh, I think I think this one just felt a little bit weaker, you know, in all in the aspects of uh, graphic design and presentation. Sad to lose Kettle Pig, because once again, really, really enjoying most Kettle Pig stuff, but that's just the way things are going. That's the way the uh, shark bites, I guess. So we'll be uh, moving forward into the next assignment. All right, assignment number 15 comes to us from our good friend, Jet, who is actually joining me on the call right now. Hi, Jet. Hey, what's up? Yeah, and uh, this is going to be a character illustration of a distressed fighter pilot. So we're going for emotion, but for sure, definitely follow and check out Jet on Instagram and other social media stuff. YouTube, of course. If you ever go to conventions in your local areas, be sure to look for him. He might be there. Aww. You never know. So anyway, we had a ton of, ignore all the memes, we had a ton of great illustrations today. Uh, jorts, you know, lovely colors, Naka, lovely emotions. Uh, one of my favorites was definitely this one by Yu Yu Yuan, who, uh, you know, I'll just, you can, obviously it just has an embarrassing version of me as the villain, which you always love that, you know, goofy cynics eating Doritos with chopsticks until the unfortunate event, the canon event where I destroyed poor Chip's face. Sorry, Chip. I was, I did not know. Sorry about that. Um, but anyway, we got tons of good ones. Edward, of course, keeping it alive with crazy, ambitious little animations. Little Pacific Rim references. Love it. Uh, we got T Ted's adorable H Joy. Uh, so many, so many different good ones. Jet, what do you think overall about all these entries? 
I'm honored to be part of this one, and I finally could join you. And there, it was just so fun to see you guys explore the uh, the pump using the pump that I gave you guys. So, I had a lot of fun. And you guys are incredible. Um, I, uh, uh, one of one of your second favorites was uh, this one by Kuzlan, uh, which was great. Hey, I I said it was one of my top favorites. I'm just not even. Gonna yeah. say second. I just had to flip a phone. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. This is awesome. Right up there, right up there. Mm -hmm. uh, Double had some good, good little little touches of comedy and emotion. I would say, I, I was also a big fan of Trout's. Uh, just so much movement and expression. Probably the most expressive one in some ways. I would say the 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 awkward drippings coming off this character as they're so stressed out. <laughs> oh, I, uh, I especially like. So we have a lot of those big shapes and then the jagged shapes but you also have the fine little shapes it's like when we talk about rule of thirds this person is going between extremely small fine detail mixed in with large blocky shapes and it's like one I great thing they did uh was to leave all of the cockpit kind of stuff very simple like this is just like a round shape you know there's repetitive round shapes and like kind of very simple shapes to contrast all the you know the characters like more angular crazier shapes um yeah. Pull spider layer right with on. the amazing footloose tribute to shinji <laughs> uh elodin of course with the anime which was amazing today but once again you'll just have to watch it on your own time come into the server sometime watch them all and your winner pick for uh this challenge was this one by josie with the the missing arm the, uh, the arm getting blown off 90s anime vibes i'm telling you josie spoke to my heart like for this one especially like because i'm doing a lot of like uh, throwbacks in 90s anime manga styles the colors are so cohesive and then the, yeah the, it just feels like something i've seen in an anime yeah uh oh, and then we got half fun little twist with the little uh storefront uh little rocket ship thing <laughs> Um, and Miss Ali with this one, which I love the expression, a uh, little bit yeah. awkward on the bullet tangent, but good expressions and stuff. So overall, yeah, the winner was Josie, uh, with a bunch of obviously right up there runner ups. Uh, but now go. the, the unbearable, uncomfortable, unfun part of having to eliminate people rests, uh, in my pruning hands. Man, we're we're only at twenty two, but I'm still pruning two, which oof, that's that's harsh when we're at. I'm pruning ten percent right now, so I will be pruning today. Uh, Storse, I'm sorry, I'm pruning Storse. Uh, Storse. I love Storse's art. Storse usually just has amazing stuff. I feel like this one got a little bit lost with some of the shapes, some of the readability just wasn't there today uh, when everyone was just nailing them. So. Uh, just didn't quite have the readability that I would like. Um, so it's sad to see Storse get knocked out. And, yeah. oof, uh, another, I got, I can't believe I have to prune two today. I, I think, I, I think I'm gonna prune Gurp, Gurp all today. I'm sorry, I know, fan favorite Gurpel, but, uh, I just didn't quite get the sense of distressed emotions as well as I could. Um, they just kind of look intense, angry, maybe a little bit upset. Uh, but I didn't really dislike this piece at all. I, I, I think it's a nice piece. It's just there's so much strong stuff today that it's just just wasn't quite at the top of the list. Uh, it was great seeing all the art by Gerbel and Storrs. Hopefully they continue to be active and hang out. But yes, that that's how we'll leave it. So thank you, Jet, for joining me on this little judging session and for giving us a prompt. Uh, appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. No, I appreciate for having me. Yeah, really for sure. Fun. All right. Well, take it easy, Jet, Bye. and we will move on to our next assignment. All right, for today's assignment, assignment number 16, we had a guest prompt from Ditus, a longtime prompt giver, a regular, someone that has given some of the most weird and outlandish prompts, uh, and the most disturbing prompts, perhaps. Uh, but nonetheless, we enjoy our Ditus prompt every year. And this year, he has given me a single word, yet again, and this word is feast. People can interpret that to mean whatever they want. Starting off, Trout had a little 
just a massive collection of little references to saplings still going on. And I like the presentation. Kind of has that dramatic uh, old Cartoon Network flair in the rendering of that. Naka had this absolutely lovely piece. Naka is so good with shapes and colors and movement, and motion, everything. And I'll just tell you right now so I don't have to come back. Naka was indeed the winner today. Uh, absolutely love that. Jorts had this, another, we're seeing a lot of uh, Easter eggs, a lot of callbacks to previous uh, characters and everything like that. So while we had Trout here doing all of the currently existing saplings, we did have Jorts here doing all of the fallen pruned saplings, I believe. But little references, good Easter eggs to last year's prompts. Vivo would have loved to be here, I think. And uh, yeah, we have all this kind of good stuff happening. Yu Yu Yuan decided to continue in the lore that was built upon yesterday's little entry. And now he's coming for, Chip is coming for his revenge. He's got his poison. He's about to attack me in one of my um, iconic mukbang moments. So uh, we got that stuff going. Edward, of course, you know Edward's gonna make an amazing animation. Just chips getting eaten, Shamalu's getting eaten. Urkel, maybe safe, maybe safe. No, then Sabi said eat the Urkel and now Urkel's dead. So thank you Sabi for being the, just the most evil troublemaker of all. T-Ted had this adorable capybara hot pot, which is great. Spider layer, multiple layers, lovely lighting, I will say. Uh, good control over depth. Uh, Sabi also getting uh, nice and creative with the color choices, but some some good stuff going on there. Hopefully Sabi's recuperating. Sabi's been sick a while. Uh, also had this one, uh, Ring of Rune killing it and bringing back Nijimin's cadet, which is just adorable. Just look at it. What a what a great combination, Ring of Rune and Nijimin. Uh, good combo to see. And of course the aftermath, the sugar shock. Ophelia had a great one. Just going back to the lovely line style with flat colors, but lovely piece. Definitely could put this on a an iPhone case. But then we had Kuzalan. Kuzalan's just been really killing it with the control over contrast and color and everything. That's that's great. It's great looking. Uh, Odin as well. Just a lovely illustration. Lots of tributes to either their own cadets, other cadets, but I love to see it. Kavik going for the Bloodborne route, which I respect. Another ambitious, delightful rendering. Josie had this one referencing in the little video from earlier. Gotta love some protein. And the Misali with this amazing control over darker value ranges and brighter value ranges to give us this creepy view. A really in your mouth view of someone eating sausage to half, lighting things on fire to keep in line with old uh, gimmicks and promises. It's always nice to see. Anyway, we have Double here making some amazing, lovely references yet again. Good emotion. I love this Andre character. <laughs> and then we had H Joy here, the little vampire reference and Trout just showing some information, but that's all of them. I do have to prune one sapling today. It's going to be, it's going to be Josie. I'm sorry, Josie. Uh, it's just a little rougher than everyone else's and we will be moving forward with the next assignment. All right, everyone, everyone, act cool. All right, assignment number 17 comes to us from Marco Bucci himself, the Bucci main. This is going to be an environment assignment. Uh, the environment is a prompt as follows. A small village nestled in close quarters foothills can't build out, so must build up. The main thing we're looking for, because you can interpret it as either building on the sides of hills or just like on a hill to build up. Um, and both people interpreted it both ways, that's fine. So we're down to just 19 people and we have a lot of good entries uh, to look at, of course, Edward always does a lovely animation. You can see the scaffolding. People, the progress, the buildup. Uh, definitely one of my favorite entries. We have Naka, of course, always looking lovely with the aesthetics. George, great colors, great looking stuff. Yu Yuan, uh, nice. Tita, definitely one of my favorites. This, I mean, just look at these. 
If you ever need an illustrator for doing any kind of, I don't know, family uh, oriented art, give T Ted all of your monies. Lots of good pieces going around here though. You know, nice little building, a lot of good architecture we're seeing. Alto did a spider mouse village, which is fun. Uh, and Trout continuing the narrative lore that Trout has been building for the past six or so, five, six uh, assignments. Uh, it's been fun to watch. Sabi absolutely nailing these colors and this aesthetic too. Once again, you want some, we got some great options here if you're trying to get a children's illustration or book made, you know, we got some good, some good art. Kuzlan, of course, very strong. My winner of the day absolutely happened to be Odin. Uh, Odin had this lovely little concept where, of course, only the rich can live on the top and the poor people are in the shadows. Got some lovely little subtle references going down here. Just a, just a great execution. Very straightforward, you know, very likable and uh, effective, I guess is the best way to put it. Just feels like it really nails the idea of the prompt, in my opinion. So yeah, great job by Odin. Ophelia, lovely colors. Maybe a little bit of room for compositional improvements, but definitely great with the colors and ideas. Ringarune, also beautiful rendering. Just, just absolutely stunning, especially in this bottom area. Uh, looks really, really nice. And uh, Spider Layer continuing on from a previous prompt with the little guys collecting water in the air. Now you can see them bringing the water back. Look at this little happy guy. He's happy, everyone's happy to see him come back with his little bit of water. Always like a good callback, always enjoy the you know, continuity pieces. Double had a great execution of a really nice concept. You know, it, in my opinion, this is right up there in my favorite in terms of taking the prompt and executing a really good idea with it. Because look at how close these hills are. These hills are just a bridge away and it, everyone's building up into it. Really good stuff there to half incorporating their world and their kind of blockier, you know, interesting tree dynamics and everything into that. Elodin had an amazing piece that you will have to watch on your own. Do it. Um, and Miss Ali with the lovely control over values and primary and secondary read. All good stuff, but I do have to prune one person. And obviously, as you might notice, uh, they're all quite nice. I know, Tavik. I'm sorry, Tavik, because the reason I didn't mention it was because I, I am going to be pruning Tavik today. I know. Uh, I didn't have any real strong problem with it. There wasn't really any issue with any of them. I just feel like uh, it had a little bit of control over value range, you know, to show depth. That could have been a little bit better. It's good. I just... I just think it could have been a little stronger in some of the aspects. All right, well, that's that's where we're at today. We're down to 18 now, so climbing further and further down, um, but we'll see what happens next. For today, we have assignment 18, which is coming to us from Jeff Simpson, an absolutely amazing uh, painter, illustrator, someone who does very creepy paintings that I absolutely love. Uh, and he gave us a slightly creepy little prompt. So it's a creature assignment and the prompt is eyes of a friend, the gaze of a fiend. So we'll we'll take a look after we get past all of this creepiness. Yes, ooh, awful. Uh, into the actual entries, which start here with Yu Yuan. Um, could, could be a little more interesting, but has some good ideas. I was worried about H Joy because I'm like, oh, this is a really nice illustration and a good use of eye expression, but it's not a creature. So they had to had to pull a little wild card and just try to be like, no, it's a creature underneath. It's this transforming creature. All kinds of cute stuff. Naka had a great one. Trout's looking good. Uh, more lore, by the way. The lore keeps developing. Jorts only had time to draw a bunch of little cats here. Um, Alto did a little tribute to a little, this little doggo here. Edward, going for the animation, just the, the girl transforming into a big old teeth monster, um, which is a lovely animation, by the way. But we had T-Ted, who uh, happens to be the winner of today's challenge. So uh, great job, T-Ted. Just a lovely little creepy, both creepy and uh, cute 
you know, pretty good combination of creepy and cute and some eyes that make you feel one way or the other. It's de you're definitely gonna feel one thing or the other. Kuzalan had a lovely rendering here, just a little friendly, but maybe evil creature. <laughs> uh, Devil had this little, this little guy here, it's freaking out, going friendly, being feral. <laughs> Spider Lair had this little cute guy with a cobra for a tail. Odin, a little bit rough on the wings, but some nice ideas in this weird looking creature design. Little tentacle tails. Sabi had a great one. Definitely enjoy Sabi's. Good execution, good style. Uh, lovely all around. Some fun ideas going on in there. And Rangarune as well. Always doing great stuff. Uh, I'll go to this version. This version's better. Get the little flash, flash of evilness coming out of it. Ophelia, uh, some good shapes, some very unique design aspects. I feel like the more you look at it, the more unsettling you might start feeling. Uh, Elodin had an absolutely amazing anime episode. It's like seven minutes long, so you gotta watch it on your own time, but it's it's quite good. Masali, lovely rendering, a uh, nice creature there. Could look a little more cute and friendly. De half. This is a little spider lady. Okay, so a lot of a lot of creepiness, a lot of cuteness, a lot of mixing of the two all around, all over the place. So, what the heck should I prune today? Uh, I don't know exactly. I feel like at the end of the day, when all is said and done, I'm actually going to prune very unpopularly. I'm going to prune jorts. This is probably my favorite drawing I've had to prune because I love the drawing, but I can't deny, I can't deny, I can't deny that it doesn't actually do much in the way of a creature design. Um, it's just a bunch of cute drawings that are really, really good. Um, so, you know, it's a tough decision because it's really nice, but, but, but it is just a collection of cute little silly cats. As good as it is, we gotta cut that one out and move along. So, uh, sad to see that happen. Goodbye, George. Goodbye, love. I wish you well, well enough. Far. Goodbye, George. Goodbye, love. It was good. Now it's gone. Oh, breaking up is always hard to do One last chance is all I want with you I can go and do it all again and pretend... All right, today we have Assignment 19, uh, which is coming to us from Mike Uwandi, who uh, is a great Viz Dev artist, worked on Marvel, a lot of stuff, has his own studio now, which is great to see. But he gave a creature slash character prompt, which is a swordsman Kalugo with their tardigrade mount. If you don't know what a Kalugo is, it's kind of like a little flying gliding uh, mammal, kind of like a sugar glider. And a tardigrade is like, technically like a microscopic thing, but it's just like a multi-legged thing. Um, and anyway, yeah, we're gonna be looking at both of them together and see how they work out. So uh, we'll look at all of them. We had this little bouncy, little bouncy guy by Ophelia. Naka had this lovely, lovely tardigrade and Kalugo combo. Um, love all the textiles, love all the patterns, love the shapes. Naka is just cracked when it comes to shapes and presentation, you know, just nice, comfy palettes. Edward, uh, feeling sick, but definitely nailing the shape language. Love, really, really love the look of the Kalugo guy here. Just great shapes on that. Love the giant head and the small body. T-Ted had this one. Um, a couple a couple shapes could have been a little better, but I like a lot of the details. It's very nice. Yu Yu Yuan, this one. Once again, everyone's bringing a lot of good shapes and accessories into their tardigrade mounts. Alto going for the Akira slide, which you gotta love it. You gotta love an Akira slide anytime you see one. Masahi had this one, um, which it's good costume concept, some good ideas. A little rough on the composition, a little rough on the some of the other stuff in the shapes. But then we had Trout, 
something like this one looking pretty good i would say and the winner by the way for today's assignment actually went to kuzalon with this once again kuzalon's just been a rendering machine just amazingly consistent with light and color and i would even say composition definitely a solid design going on there spider layer absolutely nailed this one as well love the tiny tardigrade love some of these accessories love the anatomical accuracy of this little kalugo as well and sabi looking at just as confident as can be with some lovely little comedic elements love the tardigrade love all of this stuff the big sword can't deny that H joy some beautiful shapes on this tardigrade a uh, little little hard to read the face in here this is actually the eye and the nose but they're, they're a little tricky to read that that was my only issue with that ring arune very solid as always just good wonderful piece odin probably my favorite concept of all of the entries because you got this mount with a little perch up here and our little kalugo swordsman can just sit up there and for lookout and then glide down to his little mount. I absolutely love that. And then uh, we have Elodin who, oh, well, you can't watch it, can you? You'll have to go on. And to have amazing shapes, ridiculous shapes, beautiful shapes. And speaking of beautiful shapes and poses, a uh, double absolutely killing this one with some gesture and some you know, actual action shots, some posing, some good, good, good shapes going on there. But now's the tough part, because you're probably thinking, well, those were all quite good. How are you going to prune too? My first prune is actually going to be Masalhi. It just was a little less engaging than the rest. And oof, I can't believe this is a double prune day. But I think... Uh, I think no matter what I choose, everyone's going to be sad. Um, but I think the uh, prune today, it's going to be Elodin. We're pruning Elodin today. We are pruning Elodin. I know it's been, Elodin has given us such joy every single day. I do feel like for the record, this anime episode, uh, it wasn't as good as the other episodes anime time canceled anime is over anime is dead today uh and we will move on regardless and so you'd soon be leaving me alone like i'm supposed to be tonight tomorrow and every day there's nothing here that you'll miss i can guarantee you this of smoke trying to occupy space what a fucking joke what a fucking joke Assignment 20 comes to us from a longtime prompt giver and good friend Jeremy Aninos who uh, is working at Riot these days uh, but this will be another character assignment, and we are going with the prompt that Jeremy gave of mythological character in a Mad Max setting. We will be pruning two saplings today, which is rough because we're at 15 right now. It's the last big cut we'll have for the record. Uh, but let's take a look. Let's see what we got. We got Edwards, uh, I assume. This is a Thor fighting a giant giant. <laughs> we have... Naka, who uh, you might notice is just amazing and absolutely killed this one, which is why, no suspense needed, Naka is the winner of today's challenge. Absolutely crushed that one. So hooray for Naka. Good job. Then we got T-Ted going for this uh, little bit of Medusa action. We had Yu Yu Yuan, King Arthur, and the legendary Excalibur. Um, some minor issues with that. Uh, definitely right up there with Naka in terms of my favorites for the day. We have H-Joy. Great shapes, great style, great palette. Uh, good everything, honestly. It's, it's quite a strong piece. We also got Sabi, not to be ignored. Sabi absolutely crushed it. But <laughs> for all you youngsters watching, 
Santa is not a mythological creature. He's real. Don't listen to Sabi. Sabi just lost lost the love. And uh, then we got Kuzlan, uh, another Medusa gang, uh, but a lovely one again. Odin went for, well, Odin. Odin made Odin, which, you know, fitting. Why not? Have, have Odin make his own Odin in a Mad Max setting. Definitely a good piece. And Alto went with a Naga, which is looking pretty good, I would say. Some good creative ideas using uh, bullets and guns and stuff, you know, to give it that Mad Max flair. And then Shrout had this one going into a slightly, it was a slightly original character based on uh, Mayan, I believe, or was it Aztec? I already forgot. I'm gonna say Mayan. I'm gonna go with Mayan on this one. Feeling, feeling Mayan. And then we had Ophelia going with Artemis and Ringarune, of course. The Yeti Smasher. A Yeti! I mean, once again, this is gonna fly in the face of many, uh, you know, Discovery Channel watchers to find out that maybe, maybe Yetis aren't real. Maybe Yetis are just mythological creatures. <laughs> They're real to me, damn it. They're real to me. <laughs> And then we have Spider Lair going with a centaur. <laughs> Lost his horse half. But it's all been converted into a nice little hot rod design. And uh, De Half coming in with this one. Uh, uh, Lake Lu. I, I'm probably butchering that name. The God of Order. So a lovely, lovely little rendition there. And of course, double. Double win for Wukong, the Monkey King. Playful one. Um, with a little bit of Mad Max elements. So, the unpleasantness of trying to prune this down to 13. I think I'm going to be pruning, uh, um, I'm gonna be pruning Ophelia today. I'm sorry, Ophelia, you've done plenty of beautiful, wonderful art. I've been enjoying a lot of it. So, there's that. But I can't even be done there with that unpleasantness. I gotta find one more. Um, but I think overall, design-wise, execution, creativity, presentation, all these things combined, uh, I'm gonna have to go to you, you, you on. Some of the shapes were a bit off to me, so. Uh, that's it, that's it. We're planning those two, we're moving down to 13, and we're moving right along. You, you, you want heaven help the fool who falls in love. You, you, you want to be on my mind, girl, since the flood. All right, assignment 21 comes to us from longtime friend Sykra Yasin. This will be a character or creature assignment, depending on how you want to interpret it. And it is going to be Mother Marmot. Yes, the prompt is Mother Marmot. A marmot is a uh, little little rodent-like creature, a little groundhog kind of guy. But anyway, uh, we will be pruning one sapling today. So uh, let's take a look at what people did. Up first, we got Naka uh, with this lovely little illustration environment piece. Giant Mother Marmot here, looking over the little kids as they mess around in the crosswalk. That's good. Uh, Edward had this entry, a little animation again. Just cute little... <laughs> with a little screaming, um, which is adorable. Even got a little Urkel hanging out with the marmots in there. Spider Layer went the absolute opposite direction and made something uh, terrifying and creepy. You know, unsettling to say the least, but Nonetheless, a uh, pretty good render. Alto went, once again, we're kind of hitting every emotion and note you could hope to hit. We're going all over the place, because now, right after that one, we got Alto, almost tripped me up, making this one, which is illuminating as to uh, Alto's personal life, but looks uh, pretty nice. Good control over light, good control over values, um, pretty good pose and gesture and everything like that. And T-Ted, back again in the cutest direction possible with this mother marmot just having a great time. And then we had Kuzalon. It looks delightful. A lot of good shapes happening, a lot of fun movements, um, and a good concept. We got H-Joys coming up next. 
and going for the character route, going for a character taking care of little marmots. Great style. I love some of the little like kind of loose disconnected hatching stuff, the kind of rake of uh, movements gives it a little bit, like a little subtle touch of some Lion Decker flair in there. And overall, I'll just tell you right now, this was the winner of today. So great job, H. Joy, beautiful piece. We also got Trout then with this one. I just, these little marmots are delightful. It's got a whole little backstory, little crime family with mother marmot leading all these little marmots. I enjoy that. We got Sabi going for Mother Marimot uh, with a little a little religious icon marmot. Lovely details, lovely presentation, really good stuff. Anyway, we got Odin next and sadly, I guess spoilers, no, no spoilers. It's written right here. Um, Odin is offering up a prune today. It wasn't, just wanted to call it quits on this one. It was coming along all right. Um, but I think they're a little bit, a little bit just burnt out this week, having low morale. Once again, when you're kind of a little bit burnt out, your, your harshness levels on your own work can get a little bit strong. I think they'll look back at some of these entries from the past few days and probably think more highly of them in the future. But nonetheless, Odin, absolutely amazing artist. Highly looking forward to seeing more stuff from Odin in the future. Meanwhile, we're gonna have Ringarune here, um, just doing some lovely Ringarune style art, which I appreciate. I feel like everyone's art style has just become more and more like honed as these assignments carry forth. De Half coming, bringing the cadet back uh, for this lovely piece with his big old mother marmot sleeping peacefully on the ground, hopefully sleeping. Or we can take it in another direction and pretend that uh, De Half's cadet slayed this gorgeous beast and now it's just slumbering peacefully for all eternity um <laughs> you can see you can see its soul trying to escape through its ear the little ghostly soul as it comes up out of the ear and of course double really strong with all the character um just personality stuff just really good stuff absolutely love that one definitely in my top two uh so great job double so yeah, that's gonna do it for today. We're down to, well, we were at 13, now we're down to 12. So we're into the final dozen here. Uh, we've taken the baker away and we're looking at the dozen and we're ready to move on to the next assignment. Today's assignment, number 22, comes to us from Bobby Chu. It rhymes. Uh, this will be a creature assignment and we're going with the dream weaver a creature that can alter the dreams of people So just want to see some weird creature thing that can alter people's dreams of some sort We'll just be printing one today, of course uh, But man, there's only 12 left. So it's gonna be tough Jumping straight in there. We'll give them all a look because there's once again just 12 uh, Naka had this one a lovely illustration. This little guy's tangled up in a dream catcher. But good shapes, good presentation. Could be a little bit more exciting. I don't know. We're getting to a point where it's like we got to be harsh even on our favorite artists. There's also H. Joys, which I think is looking pretty strong. Going for an owl creature. Odin would have loved this. I like the general idea of it. Seems like a decent concept. Uh, and then Edwards bringing us into the giant dream weaver spider. Pulling the dreams out of this poor guy. T Ted had this adorable, maybe adorable illustration, but also creepy. But it's relatively tame. I think you can show it to your kids. This is what happens. You hear me, kids? If you stay up too late, if you eat too much candy, the dream weaver comes for you in your sleep. Knit it. And it eats your dreams and spits them back out onto you. Then we had Alto, who did this uh, lovely piece with all of its tentacles, making this cool rock star guitar, um, weaving it into their dreams. Uh, that's really nice. Uh, and in fact, it's so nice that I decided to give the win to Alto today. So congrats to Alto. Uh, really fun concept of an illustration and that's great. We also got Sabi making this one. It's a cute little, cute little guy right here. Some nice Sabi trademark techniques going on. Then we got Trout, non-canon. Um, but 
some good little references to the sleeping and cadets that have maybe passed before, or at least some of them. The presentation definitely helps a lot and uh, makes it pretty good. We got Kuzlan, we got a little teddy bear here, confronting the Dreamweaver in the land of brains and threads. But yeah, it's solid. Uh, I do think there are some rooms for improvement in the creature design, I will say that. I think there's aspects of it, like the head and the back part kind of being a little similar in size. There's just some, some dynamics to it that could be improved, but they carved it out of soap, so that's good. Spider Lair had this one, which once again, Spider Lair showing off, hey, hands, no problem. Fingers and hands, easy peasy. Lemon squeezy, no issue. Uh, and that's always fun to see. Good expressive hands going on there. Some nice touches. Uh, I do think there, you know, there's always room to subtly improve a couple aspects of the design, much like I mentioned for some of the previous ones. And then we had Ring Rune doing this cute little goober of a guy. He's a little, little tiny, uh, tiny frog-like creature that just jumps around in your brain neurons and just affects your dreams with different emotions. So that's fun. I like the, once again, there's a nice put together lore for these creatures. Uh, the illustration looks pretty good. I'd say there's a couple shape dynamics that are slightly interfering with each other, just in the three dimensional read, but the colors, everything looking quite nice. De half made this one, which looks pretty great from a, just a quick, comfortable art read standpoint. You know, it's just got very clear shapes and nice, simple presentation. Once again, maybe a, a couple aspects to the design that could be potentially just streamlined. And then we had double with this one, uh, the malfeasant spirit. Yeah, it's just putting all the horrible thoughts into your dreams. This evil little stinker of a guy. Um, so that is quite a solid collection of designs. And of course the winner was Alto and they're celebrating. <laughs> but we do have to eliminate someone and I am uh, I'm a little like unsure exactly. It's gonna be a bit random. Um, yes, I'm, I'm gonna give the prune today. I'm gonna prune Spider Lair. I'm sorry, Spider Lair. Nonetheless, can I just mention that Spider layer has just been improving like crazy. I don't know. Maybe there's a slight level of me just being like, well, I've may maybe I've just seen spider layer compete so often that I've uh, I've kind of gotten used to some of the some of spider layers things. But spider layer has been just improving nonstop, and I I have to say I have been extremely impressed by spider layer spider layers year after year growth. I feel like a lot of people, sometimes they just kind of, you know, stagnate around. Maybe they kind of are in the same spot. But man, Spider Layer has definitely leveled up a ton. The environments, the industrial stuff, all the stuff, all the weaknesses have been uh, really, really just coming through and been getting fixed up. Uh, so we will be doing that prune and moving forth into the next assignment. All right, for assignment 23, uh, we have a nice little prompt from Sam Does Arts, Sam Yang. Uh, this is going to be an illustration or maybe character assignment, uh, but it is very simply a very misunderstood villain. So that's it, you know, that can be interpreted in a lot of different ways. So we'll see how everyone did. First up, ignoring all this, we have Naka giving us some Santa Claus. Um, and I guess you can interpret this in a couple different ways, but no, this is a great piece, lovely colors, good expressions, you know, just a fun illustration. So that was a good one. We had T-Ted also bringing back the old gaze of a fiend uh, to give us a little sequential art of this cute little guy doing some potentially evil stuff in a very cute and naive way. I like it, so hooray. We also got Edward absolutely destroying this prompt by giving us, once again, some amazing illustration. 
uh, or animation rather, illustration and animation, amazing on both ends uh, of a witch being burned at the stake for practicing medicine. Once again, can't say enough about Edward. Edward has just been absolutely making like professional tier stuff every single day. Trout going very deep into the lore of characters here, and I can't go through all of it on your own, but there are some interesting implications provided in the lore. Uh, and they have this illustration right here, which I will admit on face value, it's hard to uh, understand what the prompt would be if you were just looking at it, you know? There's no real context to know that this is about a misunderstood villain, but if you include the context out here, it is quite a lovely illustration. Alto, we have this little raccoon getting some food for the family, you know, just trying, just trying to survive, uh, which is indeed, there is no greater misunderstood villain in modern society than wild animals just trying to survive in a world that has taken away all of their natural habitats. All right, ignoring that. We had one by Sabi. You don't understand, mom. Yeah, no, that's a, it's a relatable level of misunderstood villainy going on here. Uh, technically, technically, you can do it on, you can, you can say both, both sides can be looked at as the misunderstood villain, depending on your, your framework for things. Execution is pretty nice. I would have liked to see a little bit more just environmental aspects, but it's nice. Kuzlan went for this big, like kind of fire elemental, accidentally destroying a town, trying to keep them warm. I do feel like it's a little, a little weaker than some of the stuff we've seen from Kuzlan lately, but it's mostly just some of the poses just feel very, very stiff and kind of the interactions between smoke and everything could be just a little bit stronger, a little bit more pushed. And then we had H-Joy who almost decided to self prune, but instead gave us this lovely piece of art with this very villainous looking character, but they're just trying to, you know, get the cat to, uh, you know, behave so that it can get its little treat, which I can relate to. You gotta make sure the cat calms down before you give them the treat. Otherwise it's like you're rewarding them for being chaotic. But anyway, it's a good, it's a good idea, good concept. Then we had Ringarune who uh, is taking this in a, a different but creative direction by simply giving us a just a straight up villainous character that is misunderstood, not in the figurative sense, but in the literal sense that no one can understand what the heck they're saying. Up next, we have De Half, who decided to do fan art of Henny. And uh, this is just a nice little tribute to Henny's character, protecting this little blobby guy, which, you know, he's adorable. How can anyone see this as a villain or a monster? But nonetheless, Maybe some people are attacking this poor guy and uh, Henny's cadet is, you know, here to defend this misunderstood villain. <laughs> and finally, we have Double here who, yes, actually did win. Uh, my winner for the today was Double with this little reunion between a mother and daughter. But a great image, good readability, good concept, just all around very solid. Great stuff across the board. Uh, once again, since we're down to just a, just a small chunk of our original saplings, uh, it's very tricky to pick winners and losers, but I think I'm gonna prune Ringarune. I, I just feel like this character over here just felt a little awkward, despite the great expressions. It's a tough decision, but, um... Yeah, that's, that's where we're at. So uh, we'll move on, see what happens next. All right, today's assignment comes to us from YouTuber Ethan Becker. That guy, you might know him. If you look down low enough, you might have seen him around YouTube. Uh, so this will be an illustration assignment. The prompt is two mercenary friends share a drink on lunch break. Let's check out what we got. So. Up first, ignore all the jokes and memes. Up first, we have ignore the names as well. Everyone's being uh, difficult. <laughs> this is H-Joy. Uh, we have this piece by H-Joy and I absolutely love the presentation of all the colors and stuff happening up here. And just the feeling of the characters is really nice. I do kind of wish some of these uh, 
dead creature things in the bottom were like a little bit softer in their contrast uh, just to just to kind of make it a little bit darker in the shadow areas but i like it it's good we also have t ted here what are you two doing on your lunch break <laughs> that awkward time where you go into the the lunchroom and you find this uh, but these are two little mercenaries they're sharing a drink they're really sharing a drink and i appreciate that we are just friends, you know, it's all good. So there's that. Uh, Naka had this one uh, with some two uh, little uh, soldiery looking mercenaries sharing some drinks. My issue with this one is really just that I don't feel like the background complements the foreground elements. A rare miss, I would say, from Naka, but nonetheless, has some good character stuff. We also have Edward giving us little little Uber Eats action as they uh, had two two cadets here just hanging out after some murder. So that's nice. Naka's character and Edward's character. We also got Kuzalon taking a Capri Sun break. I appreciate that. They even have a lovely little version. Does this? Oh yeah, we can get in there and just using all of our technology, going through layers. Uh, that's fun. Feels like a good piece. So nice. Then we had Sabi here. I'm sorry, Taylor Swift here. Um, and this piece is lovely. Good characters, you know, nice kind of shapes going on, some good uh, feeling of emotions and spoilers. This is the winner for today. I picked this one as the winner. I just think it's it's just a nice piece. Congrats to all the Swifties out there. You did it. And not to be ignored. We also have, ignore this, Trout. It has good character interaction. I think it's pretty fun. Uh, potentially, I guess you could have tried to make them more mercenary-esque, but it seems pretty fun. I like it. I think it's up there near the top. And then after that, we had Alto. Once again, ignore the names they're they're confused they're all confused they're they're delirious at day 24. so we had alto giving us another cat and mouse mercenary core job well done no job too big or too small i do think the face could just be a little bit better honestly in some of the forms of it um but it's pretty nice looking good color palette i like some of the shape design stuff i'm seeing so that's good we also have the half here we got like a couple prisoners giving a hot dog to a, to a prisoner. Uh, or a couple, I guess, mercenaries giving a hot dog to a prisoner, rather. Um, now, colors are looking great. There are some, you know, when you squint your eyes, you kind of see, might notice some awkward placements, some awkward maybe tangents, this triangle and the skin tones versus the shape next to it. Uh, there's a couple couple weak spots that could be a little bit better just in the design elements. And then we had, ignore that, Double. Double did this one. Uh, two characters hanging out after slaying a dragon, having a little, having a drink. It's like a little D&D &D party over here. So, those are pretty good. <laughs> that's probably what you're thinking because that's what I was thinking when I looked at all 10 of them. And, well, we still got a prune one, so... Um, I think there are some issues and I'm going to be pruning to half. I'm sorry. Amazing colors. I just feel like the, the story, you know, the prompt was a little bit, a little bit twisted, a little bit off. Uh, I do think there is room to improve this one a bit. So we're going to, we're going to leave it at that. We're moving on with just nine saplings left into the final day of pruning, which is the next one. All right, here we are at the final day of pruning, assignment 25. Uh, this will be the last prune before we get to our final kind of little tournament chunk of this year's Chroma Core. So for this, we had an illustration assignment. The prompt was simply, you can't hold back the tide of nature. This is a lore-based theme. Uh, we are based around uh, the fact that Chromacore has been basically overrun with plants, and I've been trying to prune them back, all these saplings, all this overgrowth, but no, it's time to give up. We can't fight it forever. So the overgrowth is just overtaking all of Chromacore. More 
plant than school at this point. That is just the thematic theming for this prompt, but they can interpret this, of course, however they want. So you can't hold back the tide of nature. Anyway, let's start looking at what we've got. We've got a, another animation by Edward. Uh, it's cute little, it's just a little cynics going around, just no more pruning, just watering the plants. Uh, I will say, it's a, it's a little weaker compositionally than uh, a lot of the stuff I've seen Edouard do lately. We also had Kuzalan, who did this one, just a banished forest spirit overtaking this city with plants in the name of the pigeons to start a pigeon army. Uh, I know all about having a pigeon army from my days in the pigeon industry. Uh, but nonetheless, this looks pretty, pretty good, I'd say. So good job, Kuzalan. We also had Alto, ignore the names. Uh, this one, they just have their own sapling cadet here, just kind of barely keeping their head above water, getting pulled down, trying to trying to hold back all these, it looks like tangled in seaweed, pulled to the bottom of the water. Nice little sequential piece, some good colors, so I like it. Well done. We also had Naka with this piece, which I just, I, I, it's so cute that I, just spoilers, this is my winner for the day. I love the look of all of these cadets, just T-Teds starting off so strong, just adorable. And all of them just have so much personality and good stuff happening. Uh, I just, it's so much fun to look at. It captures all of the theme stuff of them trying to break out of this chaos of vines and everything. Just, just amazing stuff by Naka. Uh, then we had T-Ted with the weeds growing, the vine tangles, the hero can't wield the sword anymore. A nice little illustrative dramatic piece here with our hero holding his sword while the vines just overtake everything in this, this little overgrown forest that seems to be coming to life. Uh, just a lovely piece, great illustration. You know, slap a cool title card up here and this is like the cover for an amazing children's book or something. So. Great job, T-Ted. H-Joy went with the intervention of Mother Nature, an apocalypse, perhaps a new beginning. We have Mother Nature here, a an actual tsunami, a tide, a wave of just nature washing over this city skyline here, just being reclaimed by nature. Uh, it's a nice effect. It's visually very interesting. Uh, and I I think it's it's pretty good. Then we had Trout here, who's also going with a cadet heavy piece. Uh, it's me, it's me, I'm the one getting overgrown. Look at me with my sprout. That's the source of my power. They're trying to cut it off, but if they take me down. One of them's coming with me for sure. I do feel like the foreground elements, these two, just, just a little awkward with their lines of action and kind of, you know, the visuals on those. Uh, but I like all the ideas. There's some really fun touches and use of all the cadets going on in there. Then we have Sabi here, who did a piece where it's uh, just a bunch of little, little, little village that has now just started to inhabit nature. So we got, you know, houses and living quarters and buildings all built into the trees. It's the new chroma core. Little chroma core up at the top of this tree canopy. But we also have then Double was... Just just amazing looking today. Really like this one, like the idea, like the presentation of it, like the visuals. Uh, very, very solid. Definitely in my top, uh, top half of things for today. So great job. And in fact, that is all of them. And they all did quite a great job. Where do we go from here? Well, I think at the end of the day, I am going to prune one more. Uh, and I am going to prune Sabi. I'm pruning Sabi. I'm sorry, Sabi. Don't cry. I know. I know. I do feel in the in a world of great pieces with great theming. I just I like the piece, but I feel like the the theming read of it was just not quite as strong as the rest. Didn't quite have the the emotion of being overrun by overgrowth. Um, so. In that, in that one aspect of things, that one aspect of things, um, I feel like it could have been a little bit stronger. So the final eight saplings 
cadets now will be Edward, Kuzlan, Alto, Naka, T-Ted, H-Joy, Trout, and Double. And man, they got some interesting stuff ahead of them. So that's going to do it for this initial phase. And we will be moving on into finals week. All right, today for assignment 26, we are in finals week. That means no more pruning, no more cuts. We are just locked in with our eight sapling cadets. So for these eight cadets, we will be operating under a completely different system. Every single day of this finals week, the top two placing entries will each receive three points. The next two, places three and four, will receive two points. Places five and six will get one point, and places seven and eight will get zero points each day. And whoever has the most points at the end of this week will be the winner. So no more eliminations. We're just going points for the finals week, similar to what we did last year, except now we have eight people instead of the three teams. But regardless, it's pretty similar in concept. So for the very first day of finals, we have the engineering final. I know we haven't done a mech yet, but here we go. We have a prompt that we got from Adrian Bush, a wonderful artist, Plentieri. And it is an industrial design assignment to make a purely functional mech design. So we're trying to make purely functional mechs. We're trying to do our best to not have too much extra stuff and just focus on function. Uh, I know mech designs are tricky though, so we'll see what everyone did. Up first, ignore this, ignore that, ignore that. Uh, up first, we have Edward Traden, who has finally started to burn himself out from all the animation. It looks like he's just, uh, his, his motivation levels are going down the crapper, it would seem. But that's okay. We do have some nice wheels on this portable toilet. I don't know if it's technically a mech in the proper sense of the word. So there's a little bit of that. Then we had Trout, who's got the bonker which is a kind of a cute name. Uh, looks like this guy just punches stuff with big hydraulics and there's some, there's some functional stuff thrown in here. It feels a little stripped down, a little more based on functionality. So uh, it's nice to see some of that. The balance could be a little stronger, but it has some good qualities for sure. And then after that, of course we have Naka, who has this lovely uh, little piece. Looks, looking, I don't know, once again, very uh, Metal Slug-esque. And I would say it looks pretty functional. It's certainly pleasant to look at, uh, so that's good. And then we had T-Ted, not too heavy onto the functionality of the mech parts, but as a functional mech, man, this thing sure does make some mean cotton candy. I wish there was a little bit more functionality in the actual inner workings of this thing. Uh, but that's fine. Up next, then we had H-Joy, uh, who is also getting a little burnt out in this final week. The perspective and angle might be a little shifty on me, but I think for the most part, it's looking pretty good and pretty functional. So that's nice to see. Then we got Kuzalon, just has a little kind of little lazy boy with a cooler and a giant self-destruct button. Uh, got an umbrella. I guess that's functionality. We got, got a ladder. I guess that's function. I kind of wish we could see some of the functionality of, you know, the legs and limbs and a little bit more simplicity and maybe this, this back part. Who knows what it is? Is it functional? I guess we don't know. It's just a big thing back here. Anyway, we also had Alto who gave a little crab looking spidery design for their mech has a couple good aspects of functionality with the with the shocks and stuff uh it does look a little awkward and maybe a little awkward in its balance i'm not quite in love with uh just the this decision on how to actually portray it as it's a little bit flattened to our view and doesn't quite sell the dimensional space around it as well as it could but you know it's got, it's got some good touches that I like. And then we had Double, who made this lovely mech that definitely fits the cadets and has, I would say, pretty good functionality. All these kind of rib looking things kind of look like proper functional 
tubing of some sort. Got a very functional looking shoulder joint and some hydraulics and things of that sort going on throughout the different limbs. So nicely done there. Now, as I explained before, we're kind of dividing them into uh, four groups, you know, first and second place, third and fourth place, fifth and sixth place, and seventh and eighth. So pay no heed to any name that comes first. But uh, for first and second, I decided to go with double. And uh, of course, Naka here. That was my first and second, looking strong. For third and fourth place, I went with H, Joy, and Trout. So that would be this one. Also has some great elements. And Trout for this one, which also has some great functional elements. And then up next for fifth and sixth place, we went with T-Ted and Kuzalon. So Kuzalon was this one, just had some fun little silly little elements, kind of cute. And then we had T-Ted with, uh, where is it? Cotton Candy Machine, fit the, fit the character reasonably well. Um, and finally, then in the trailing at the at the at the last points, but still with some fun designs, we had Edward and Alto. Alto's was right on the border. Could have been a little higher. Could have gone either way. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna go with that for today. So that's where the point totals stand for today. So we'll see what happens next. All right, assignment 27. This will be the fine arts final for ChromaCore this year. So this assignment actually does come to us from Stephen Bauman, fine arts teacher, a great artist. Um, and he recommended that I have them do a smiling portrait. Um, so I'm going to make them do a smiling portrait of their cadet. And that shall be the challenge for today, the fine arts final. So... Obviously, some of them may not even have mouths. Some of them may not have proper faces to smile with, uh, but that's okay. That's part of the fun. That's part of the challenge of it. So let's run in there, find some good smiles for everyone. <laughs> Up first with proper, proper entries is Edward with this one. Definitely fits their character. I would say it's a pretty good, uh, it's a good smile. It's an evil smile, but it's a good, it's definitely a smile, definitely looks nice. Um, so great job there by Edward. And then T-Ted brought in this whole menagerie of fine arts references to all of the other cadets. And then of course, T-Ted right in the center. So adorable, wonderful reference, good fine arts quality to it. Definitely love that one. Up uh, next we have Naka just kind of given their regular uh, cadet, which already is usually smiling, but we brought out the eyes a little bit. We got a nice expression, a uh, good little portrait there, definitely fits Naka's style. H. Joy also just kind of really sinking into their style. Some great rendering, very nice control over quick gradations of soft edges with a couple pokes of hard edges. Always love to see that. And then Trout. Can you smile? Literally have no mouth. Okay, I'll just paint one over. <laughs> so we got a feeling skinhead. And Trout Skidette with a nice smile thrown in. I absolutely love this. The values, the feeling of fine art and classical art is definitely present in just the background choices and the value choices, I would say. And the smiles look great and it's a clever way to basically tackle this prompt. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Uh, up next, we had Kuzalan, who has the POV, you regret going to the theme park, but it's about to take your picture, so you gotta try and look happy during that last big drop of the ride. I really like the smile, some good expression going on overall, and it's a clever idea, so I like it. And then, of course, we had Alto doing a little bit of Lion Decker, a little bit of uh, some nice open, open spaced out hatching a good smile outside of Alto's regular aesthetics for this fine arts challenge. I appreciate that. And finally, Double also capturing some good expression with this, once again, fine arts look to this piece. So I just have to say off the bat, what a great lineup. Uh, yesterday's might have been a little bit rough, a little bit out of people's comfort zones, but man, everyone, definitely delivered today 
just really good art from top to bottom. Amazing stuff. I do still have to put them in groups because obviously there's points to deliver. So in first and second place, we're going with Trout and Teethead. Um, probably my most enjoyable ones just to look at today. Just very fun, very creative, uh, lovely pieces. Four places, three and four. I'm gonna go with Alto and H Joy for three and four. Uh, those are gonna be my three and four today. And it's very competitive, so, you know, I'd, everyone's doing great. Uh, four places, five and six. I'm gonna go with Kuzalon and Double. Um, and then weirdly enough, places seventh and eighth will be Naka and Edward. Not to say my last favorite or anything. I really like this one. It's just everyone's doing such a great job. So delightful. Let's move on and see what happens next. All right, we were just gonna have a simple little history final, but as you might notice, Things are getting worse. The overgrowth hasn't stopped, obviously. We tried to be okay with it, uh, but now it seems some of those saplings that we've pruned are coming back as little zombie pruned saplings to uh, attack our poor cadets. So uh, this prompt comes to us from Fat Cat, last year's co-winner along with Daco of Chromacore 2022. And the prompt is simple. They need to make an illustration showing their cadets fighting for their lives against the zombie pruned sapling attack. And there is a twist to this one because if any pruned sapling wishes to, they can also illustrate their own counterattack, or I guess you could say just illustrate themselves attacking the cadets for potentially ways to harm the cadets standing in the rankings for today's challenge. Having said all that, let's just go ahead and start looking at some stuff. Naka basically threw down the gauntlet right at the start and was like, hey, if anyone wants to come after me, bring it on. I don't mind. I'll take on all comers. So Naka is going to have a busy day defending himself. Uh, but right off the bat, we got Fishings coming after Trout. A nice little attack going on there using water whirlpool attack. I don't know what they're doing using all of their watery powers to try to drown out Trout's cadet. We also get uh, Gurple deciding to just attack me and Fat Cat. I don't know. We're just the innocent, innocent bystanders here. And then, of course, we get some other ones. We got Shum with a little bit of an attack on Double here. Yeah, nice little illustration there. Some good line art, some good drawing. Urkel has abs now as a zombie. But we also have Odin just having a funny little image. It's no use. She bit me. Come on. Come on, pull the trigger, T-Ted. Just finish them, T-Ted. Jorts made this cute little image. Little Animal Crossing looking thing. Not necessarily showing them fighting much. Maybe they're talking out their differences. We also got... Naka already defending against some of the some of the attacks that Naka is enduring. But the first attacks were from a carrot and a banana, so easy. You may have come for a fight, but for Naka, this is just breakfast. A great little image there. Can't deny that. Ophelia coming out with some lore for Oroa. Oroa being, of course, their sapling that was pruned and has been laid low at the bottom of Washout Alley, but now brought back in zombie form to maybe attack Trout? Nope, it turns out they're just gonna attack me instead, so boo. <laughs> we also have Hume here, drawing the death of Naka with, uh, I don't know, strangling. I don't even have to zoom in. All you have to know is someone's getting strangled by someone's feet and uh, whatever that means to you, great. Nijimin has this adorable little, the little, little cadet biting Double's arm. A lot of, a lot of Double. Then we have our actual cadets, Edward, giving us this illustration. Nice little action shot with some fun ideas going around. Some good action. I do wish there was a little more lighter tones, you know, a little bit of brightness. It feels a little bit, a little bit on the dingier, darker side. And then, of course, well, 
you can't see it right here, but Shucks attack Naka again, and Naka is just having a field day, just beating up all these attackers, made a whole giant webtoon. So let's just take a quick look at that. We got the original art. This is by Shucks, who had the you know concept of the painting of uh, just just Naka's cadet being absolutely swarmed by all these little creatures and whatnot. Uh, and then, no matter how hard you try, the bite of a zombie doesn't work on a zombie. So I, Naka's character is, I guess, technically a zombie. So I guess they're safe. And they have this great little action shot coming out of the zombie pile and emerging victorious. Uh, and this is a great image. Just amazing, beautiful style. Great stuff. Really like it. So lovely, lovely piece by Naka. Gulapa has uh, Sparky Poop just absolutely ripping Kuzalan's heart out. So, so mean. Just taking Kuzalan's heart right out of their body. The lovely illustration there. Someone made a little diss track using our poet, a little Pinjamin in follow alongs. And uh, yeah, Naka just bonked him on the head with the mic. Another victory for Naka, I would say. <laughs> We have some other ones, Bull Blab, drawn some crazy stuff. A lot of people starting very ambitious pieces. Not everyone getting a chance to finish them, but lots of good stuff. Kali attacking double with psychic damage by delivering some absolutely atrocious puns, which is probably the worst kind of damage, honestly. That's got to it's got to knock double down a little bit, right? <laughs> H Joy. And Alto, you might be like, prepare for trouble, make it double. They did a little bit of a collab here, each working on half of an image and painting it up all fancy in their style. There was H Joyce, here's Alto's, uh, with the combination looking pretty great together. Uh, so that's really nice. I will have to say, I think H Joy's side is looking a little bit cleaner, a little bit, you know, I love the look of all the cadets over there. There's like kind of a nice, nice kind of feel to them. Alto's gets just a little bit on the more chaotic side, but does have some nice touches. Absolutely brutalizing for Sabi's cadet there. Quite a nice piece. And then uh, Smick chasing after Alto. <laughs> T-Ted's even getting in some 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 hits in there. T Ted did this amazing piece of just you know his little cadet just wanting a hug and every single pruned sapling being represented here in this big old image. You can spot them all from Chip to Cattle Peg to Josie uh, to all these different ones. Odin, well, Eladin, all of them. They're all here. All of your favorites. Collect all of your favorites, everyone. Then Naka, of course, defending again against another attack with another great image. How many great images can Naka make in one day is the question. And then Diego also attacking Naka, but Naka's going wild. Elodin deciding to beat up the true villains. Cynics and Fat Cat, why? Double had this giant piece. Uh, you guys think you're tough because you're undead? I own the undead, which is canonically true for Double's character, but just a, just a massive image, uh, tons of stuff going on, all the current cadets represented with nice little action poses, and a bunch of previous sapling zombies coming in, some really great images going on there, that one's really nice. Even Andre, Deciding to pull a little revenge on uh, Naki here. So, Spade, zombie, killed Scruff, yet Scruff's powers activate upon death. Turn into a big old monster to counterattack Naka. Kuzlan had this lovely action illustration, holding off all those evil characters. Really nice. And um, almost in sync with it, although a little bit different. Uh, is Drawkey's image with all of these old previous pruned saplings just chasing down H. Joy, T. Ted, and Trout here, uh, which is nice to see. Cambing had this lovely piece, get bit by a furry and dot dot dot. <laughs> then Kettle Pig had their 
charming little cadet absolutely just getting brutalized and destroyed by each of the existing cadets. So just getting beat up nonstop, uh, but in the most adorable ways. So Kettle Pig, man, I miss seeing Kettle Pig's art each day because Kettle Pig makes some delightful stuff. And then Trout made their final image, which is this one. A lovely piece, honestly. Definitely has a lot of good elements, a lot of good little Easter eggs too. Some of the little zombies look delightful. Really like the look of them, Urkel and Elodin. Really good stuff there. And uh, yeah, we got more. We got Ophelia. <laughs> what? Just, just chewing, just chewing on Naka's face. Another Naka attack. Yeah, yes, yeah, and zombies do the necromancer. What could go wrong? And yes, kind of almost, almost giving double a little bit of a boost here by having a double counter all the zombies, taking control of them. And finally, Odin giving us a little bit of some fighting of Alto's cadet. So overall, that's a lot of good art, a lot of fun stuff. The top group, first and second, I have to, I despite all of the constant attacks, the defense of Naka throughout the day, making all of this delightful art will be one of the top two along with T-Ted. I'm going to actually make T-Ted the other top two. So Naka and T-Ted, uh, those are my top two for today. Of course, then we have three and four. Two characters that got beat up a lot, but definitely still had some good support, some good defensive images, and overall did a really great job. I'm going with Double and Trout. So Double and Trout, the two points. Fifth and sixth place, I'm giving that to H-Joy and Kuzalon, actually. So H-Joy and Kuzalon, despite the massive damage that a couple of them have taken, which means, unfortunately, uh, seventh and eighth go to Edward and Alto. I know, Edward in the bottom part again. I don't, it's just the happenstance of the situation. And that will be it for today. All right, and just a quick update before we move to the next assignment. The current standings are Trout with seven points, T-Ted also has seven points, Naka with six, Double with six, H-Joy with five, Kuzalon with three, Alto with two, and Edward still with zero, but uh, obviously Edward's great. Uh, and now let's move on to assignment 29, which is the chemistry final. So for assignment 29, they have to pick a lab partner from the follow-alongs, from the people that didn't get selected as actual saplings. Uh, and their challenge is to depict an illustration of their cadet and their lab partner doing some science together, synthesizing a special formula that I have given them to hopefully combat the overgrowth because I'm sick of it. I'm tired of this overgrowth. I'm sick of their zombies. I'm sick of it all. So I've given them a formula that I have thought up. It won't kill it all. It'll stunt their growth a little bit and maybe make it a little bit less harmful. So anyway, they had 24 hours. Let's see what they came up with. First of all, we had Edward teaming up with Mr. Green to give us this wonderful little animation, doing science together in the lab, a big explosion. And then, man, look at all this chaos. Um, now there is some absolutely, first of all, great job by Edward doing the animation and the first part. Uh, and Mr. Green really came through strong with this follow-up after the explosion. With so many Easter eggs, I couldn't even begin to count them all. If you follow Core, you'll be looking around and observing all kinds of other cadets, other little references, and all kinds of good stuff. There's even a little, little, little Sonics is in, in a cage where he belongs. Great team up, great work. Uh, we also have T-Ted who did a team up with Yalak and they both made some lovely illustrations in their very distinctive styles. Uh, so T-Ted had this one, there's Yalak's cadet down there and T-Ted's basically just causing trouble, doesn't know how the science works, just having fun. But T-Ted doing the actual science 
As a group assignment normally goes, one person is usually going to handle most of the work. This was Yalak's illustration of the two of them doing their little experiment, and also an amazing piece. Lovely, beautiful colors, beautiful values, really clean, really nice, very fun stuff. And then we had Naka teaming up with one of the greatest follow-alongs of all of these Chroma Cores, Funky Pepe, uh, which is quite a brutal team-up, I would say. Uh, and they did a full-on webtoon again. There's a little little preamble. Uh, they were doing their science. They keep messing it up. They, they, they had a little trouble. It wasn't quite working. So we had Funky Pepe's cadet suggest, hey, I know how we can fix all this. Uh, just follow me. Follow me, I know what we can do. So here we go, we're picking up from there. Uh, Funky Pepe breaking in to some kind of facility. Uh, hopping through the window. We are here, be careful now. We don't want to trigger the... And then of course, knock a crash in through the window. Alarm. <laughs> um, so good little comedic, uh, little comedic sequential storytelling going on. Uh, so good stuff. Good stuff all around. And of course, they see this countdown. It says the deadline. It's just in an hour and 30 minutes. What could it mean? Well, Funky Pepe's got an idea. It's probably the final countdown. Um, don't touch anything. You peasants never would understand the weight of this project. The overgrowth, the overgrowth is our only solution to reach the final goal. Resurrect the victims of this malfunctioning system, giving strength to the weak so they can fight back. This is all for the greater good. <laughs> and I, this is a little fat cat, little fat cat cadet getting squished. Dang, all right, well, so long. Rest in peace, fat cat. Um, that's enough, this fail. Yeah, he's not dead, don't worry, he's fine. We need a password. Huh? Passed out. Fonsla, uh, what did that mean? No clue. Okay, it's okay. Funky Pepe's on the case. Funky Pepe will save the day. Hmm, with his brain powers. Oh, there we go. He's got a nice idea. Enter the password. Control Z. It's a good password. Incorrect. One try left. Ah, sorry, Spade. I thought I was on to something. You are, boy. <laughs> there we go. Control Z. <laughs> there we go. Undo. <laughs> Project overgrowth canceled. All right. They've done it. Everyone, they've, they've done it. <laughs> Happy ending. Sorry, Henny, I tried to bring you back. So, wow. Another amazing day of art from Naka and with Funky Pepe, Funky Pepe thrown in there. That's some really quality stuff. Meanwhile, we had Alto who decided to just do a mega collab with uh, all, of the, all of the washouts that wanted to. Uh, so we got pieces, biped, not just shucks, Nova, Benji, no, but you're, okay, never mind. Petchy and Noir, Humav, Druid, Druid, Midnight People, Fat Cat, Mr. Green, Adam Lover, Tapias, Hume, Henny, Henny, not Fat Cat, wait, Fat Cat, again, two Fat Cats, <laughs> and Drowkey, Ray, Flint, and they did a whole on Magma Canvas collab, so it just, just doing some magma canvas drawing with everyone, which is always great to see. Um, really nice magma collab going on there with all sorts of styles, all sorts of art, all sorts of Easter eggs and references too. Looks like Alto also did a little uh, little extra piece with Hat Quantum. Uh, so that's cool to see as well. Meanwhile, Trout has a little bit of story going on, still working on their character's lore. The only thing they have to sim to still synthesize is the white color. They've got all of their other pigments, they just need a little bit of white. So they're they're trying to find a little bit of uh, Ophelia acid, a little Urkel extract, you know, mixing everything together. And what do they get? It's brown. 
it's brown. It's just you can't you can't mix pigments and get white. It's just not gonna work like that. But nonetheless, a great science experiment by the both of those. Nova Hedron absolutely killing it with this lovely painting. Trout also making a great painting. So great job by them. Alto also has more by Quack Hack Quantum. Can barely talk. Kuzalan, meanwhile, teamed up with Jeb Cosby to do this uh, lovely piece, I would say. Great illustration there, great colors. And Jeb Cosby, one of my favorite follow-alongs, also made a lovely little piece in their style. I enjoy it. And then we had Double, who did a two-page comic. We'll look through them both real fast. We did it. We finally found a solution to the overgrowth. Look at them doing science in their magical tower. And not a day too soon. And done. Thank you, Dahlia. You've been a great help. Wow. No problem. And then push. <laughs> Look at evil Dahlia pushing this poor little follow along right out the window. That's why you never trust a necromancer. <laughs> you have my thanks, Arden. A useful idiot to the end. Me helping you stop the overgrowth. I created the overgrowth. And now I can control it. So Dahlia going full on heel turn, just absolutely evil. I mean, is it really a heel turn? I think this person's been evil since the start, but nonetheless, a great sequential um, piece by those two. And, and honestly, a really lovely, lovely illustration here. Great job to double and Voland. H-Joy running out of time, didn't have a lot of time today to spend on it, but nonetheless got in a nice little simple piece there. I had some great people helping out. DeLuna making this lovely little image and Pandowski also making a lovely little image. So a uh, great job by those three and a little bit of extra stuff for Altos caused by Yukichu and a little bit of stuff there. So overall, what an amazing day. First place and second place are going to Naka and Edward. Just really, really good stuff by both of them and their partners. Uh, Funky Pepe and Mr. Green. Really, really strong images. I'm going to give places three and four to... Could go a lot of ways. I'm going to give it to Trout and a Double. Trout and Double will be getting third and fourth place. Meanwhile, making absolutely amazing art, but sadly I just don't have enough points to spread around to everyone. But in the... Next two spots, we got T-Ted and uh, oof, this could go either which way. Uh, I think I got to go with Alto just for the sheer amount of collaboration going on in here. And then our final two, not because it's not great, uh, but Kuzalan and h Joy will be at the bottom too today. We have just one more final of finals week. So let's see what happens next. Hey everyone, it is time for the final, final challenge of this final week. And actually the final challenge to declare our winner of Chrome Core 2023. So the overgrowth finale, here's what we got. Uh, the science is complete. We have successfully synthesized our formula from yesterday and I'm not gonna waste any more time. We're just gonna deploy it right now. I'm technically making a little bomb, but you know, y'all did great work. I don't think there will be any big risk. So let's do it. Your final prompt is in a deep overgrown forest comes an explosion of prismatic pastels and sparkling particles. This is an environmental illustration assignment. So here we go. Double had some Minesweeper for us. <laughs> Delightful. Trout post and answers. But let's get to the real entry. So Edward had this another amazing effects animation from Edward. Good impact. Very fun. I enjoy it. It's always hard to decide where does animation go on the grand scheme of things. But H. Joy had uh, this lovely piece, which almost just looks like an abstract album cover. But nonetheless, you can kind of get a feel that there's an ex prismatic explosion happening in there. Alto did a lovely illustration here. Let me just open it up a little bit bigger for everyone. Got their sunglasses on and the big explosion behind them. Lovely colors. 
also just lovely, lovely trees. <laughs> Naka going for a slightly different route, let's say. This little unicorn making a big old fart. I think Naka is maybe trying to throw, but we'll see. Kuzlan did a great piece. Love the movement, love the action. Some of these shapes coming off of it could have been just a little bit more just in line with a cohesive sense of the style involved. But amazing colors and amazing values absolutely every single day of this entire chroma core. Um, so well done, Kuzlan. T-Ted, always bringing something cute and funny. You have the uh, Naka devil trout hanging out in this giant explosion, getting blown up by this little stinker right here. Um, so you love to see it. <laughs> a lovely piece there by T-Ted. Uh, we had Trout, who had uh, this giant prismatic tree, an explosion happening. Uh, could, could be a bit better in some ways, but what really does help a lot is this lovely, charming little comic that goes with it. All the cadets over here looking at the explosion. And then you have settings. That's me. <laughs> the biggest prune, the entire chroma core. Nice. And then uh, Trout saying, I don't get it. What do you mean? What don't you get? Well, I just don't, I guess, you know, y'all are odd. Naka deserves the win for this one, I thought, you know? As soon as he said that quote, come at me, I'm not here to win, but to kick your ass, you know? I usually don't get along with artists. I feel like I clash a lot with their views. Didn't even know about you 33 days ago, Cynix. But here, with all these crits, not chosen, masterpiece, all that stuff. Um, here, I just like it here, I guess. So a nice little sequential art piece from Trout, which I will be weighing into his presentation here. And then finally, we have Double, another kind of nice wholesome thing. All of the, all the cadets hanging out, watching this big old explosion. Overall, um, you know, there's a lot of ways we can go with it. I feel like Trout, I really love the sequential part. I wasn't as in love with this, but this definitely boosted it up a ton. Uh, Doubles is great. T-Tens is great. Kuzlons is great. I never know how to weigh in the animations. What do you think? Is this a, is a good animation? I think it's a pretty good explosion. All right. Well, we got to figure it out. So I'm going to say... I'm I'm get a little bit uh, biased towards seeing the ones that have like characters in them, honestly, because I like, I really like the way the ones with characters, you know, a collection of characters make me feel. I can't deny it. I know it's it's uh, it's it's just seeing the characters makes me happy. So first and second place, I'm giving them to the T Ted and Double. I'm giving Double and T Ted first and second place on this particular challenge. And in third and fourth, I like, well, I personally, I'm going to put Edward in third, and I'm going to put Trout in fourth. So in case you haven't done the math by now, I'll just let you know the spoiler. Double, Trout, and T-Ted are all three winners due to the points, the way the points have broken down. Let me just also mention, uh, right right after Trout, Kuzlan, um, I mean, Edward and Kuzlan were like right in there. Um, and then Alto, and then uh, H-Joy, and then Naka in the back. So Naka, obviously, let me just take a moment because Naka is uh, absolutely Amazing. Probably my favorite artist of all the assignments. Had the most wins, for the record. Naka had the most wins out of everyone. Um, so definitely amazing year from Naka. Really enjoyed everything Naka did. Hopefully you enjoy it as much as I do. I don't know, the, the style just tickles my fancy. So be sure to follow Naka on social media. Um, H-Joy, Edward, Alto, Kuzlan, obviously amazing, amazing artist, made it through the whole thing and did amazing art. So at the end of the day, when the points totals shake down, 
We have Shrout with 11 points. We have Double with 11 points. And we have T-Ted with 11 points. Usually the co-winners thing is very uh, cliche because it's like forced upon me. But this year, I have to say, it's just the way the points came out. I wasn't trying to aim for a tie, but nonetheless, you know, the art just happened to be right at that level where they just happened to line up. So congratulations to our three winners. Having said that, we will have a finale assignment, not for anything too serious. We already have our winners, uh, but it is, it is a chance just to show some love for the winners. So I didn't record this one on live stream like I did for the rest. Instead, I just wanna go over it after the fact. So I have a little bit of breathing room and I can just relax and enjoy doing this little look back at the finale. So uh, I'll just read it for you right now what the finale assignment was. So here we go. As the smoke clears and the sparkles flutter through the mist, only double T-Ted and Trout stand victorious. The chaotic overgrowth of plants seems to be nothing more than harmless shrubs now, much smaller and friendlier. All of the prickly thorns now look like harmless round nubs. Everything seems to be cute. The formula has worked and Chromacore is at peace. To celebrate another successful year of Chromacore, the final prompt is simply double T-Ted and Trout win. All saplings are welcome to post in here. There is no more points, no more pruning, only relief and rest. Uh, but you might notice there's a little bit of a spoiler text here. So let me just check on that. As you congratulate the winners, you can't help but wonder, were they always this cute and tiny? Come to think of it, as you look around the academy grounds with the freshly visible structures reemerged from the plants, even the buildings somehow look cuter aside from one of the dorms in the distance, which looks hauntingly ominous. A mildly uneasy cynics is heard muttering something about the law of conservation of cuteness while looking over some notes. And of course, there's a little teaser for next year's Chromacore. So cynics will return in Chromacore 2024, Chibi Core versus Grim Core. So look forward to that, but we won't worry about that yet. In the meantime, let's check out some of this celebratory finale art. So I kind of encourage people to make it look like the main winners had maybe been turned a little chibi. Maybe they'd been turned a little grim. I don't know. That bomb did something, that's for sure. So anyway, we have some little send-off images from Gurpel. Uh, Jorts made some lovely little images of our three winners. I just love Jorts' colors. Uh, we have so much cute stuff to look at, honestly. Ophelia made this adorable piece with a lovely background as well, which has like its own little adorable drawings all over it. Um, so this is great. This should be like a wallpaper or something. Just tons of great drawings going around all this stuff. In case you didn't remember by now, uh, it was actually Ophelia that picked Trout to join into this competition. So uh, in the very first assignment, it was Ophelia's win that brought Trout in, which is, it's great to see. You know, both Double and Trout were both brought in after the fact in that first assignment. So Edward made some cute little art there. H-Joy giving us a lovely animation of our winners. They're way too talented, all these artists. The animations this year have just been ridiculous. Uh, George's not done yet, still making cute little chibi versions and just fun stuff happening after the explosion. Um, good little alto piece right there. Uh, yeah, just, just tons of delightful, adorable pieces here. T-Ted did a grim version of our three winners and a grim version of some of the other cadets as well. Kettle Pig made this absolutely amazing trophy golden golden texture on our three winners right there uh, i wish i could show that slightly better i should have repositioned it but man kettle pig just amazing stuff right there and some good little pieces from this and all of this other stuff diego delightful cute and adorable naka 
wonderful references here. <laughs> yeah, so it's just a collection of absolutely the most wholesome art, the most wholesome vibes, everyone just enjoying another successful year with some beautiful tributes, some beautiful fan art. Even now, it's been like a week since this happened, and even now just looking back through these, it makes me feel so, so warm and fuzzy inside. Just all of this lovely stuff that was made. There is this amazing YouTube video, which I will, uh, I think, I think the best way to do this, I'm actually just gonna attach this video, this final match video to the very end of this video. So we won't look at it right now, but in case you're wondering what the outro to this whole video is, uh, it will be this thing made by Naka uh, and basically made by Naka and about a ton of other people. So it includes over a hundred washouts in the background and includes all of the saplings, all of the cadets and the winners, but they put it all together and it looks amazing. So we're going to close out the video on this just so you know. Um, so look for that at the end. But first, let's keep going through some stuff. So we got tons of just fun little references, fishings with this adorable drawing. Just lots of great stuff everywhere. I I just love all of this art. This art is so good. Uh, Naka with the giving Trout the crown of the color wheel. Ah, beautiful, beautiful touches. Just all this stuff. I, love, I can't, I'm oh, I'm still over my brain with all of these uh, beautiful pieces that got made. Just fan arts all over the place. I love Chromacore. Chromacore is so good. Uh, I'm so happy. I know it's something that I technically run, so it feels weird to be like, oh, this thing's amazing. But, you know, my running it is just a framework. The stuff that people make inside of it is, you know, that's not me. That's all you guys. That's all this amazing community doing stuff. And it warms, warms my heart. I hope you guys, you know, feel as amazing as I do every year after this. It's just a great time. You know, art is all about things that are above and beyond a lot of the structures we have built around us in society. You know, it goes beyond money. It goes beyond all that stuff. Art is about just connecting with everyone. It's about bringing people together. It's about sharing your own perspective on things with other people and just feeling connected. It's really what it's all about. Uh, so it's just great to see every single time how much joy you can bring to everyone that's involved in this community. Um, so yeah, I, I just love it. So uh, anyway, aside from all of these delightful little videos and animations and little tribute pieces to all the art, uh, there are also tons and tons of these tributes in the follow alongs because I haven't highlighted them this year as much because we had so much stuff to go over, but man, there are so, so many amazingly talented people in the follow alongs. So I think what we'll do for a little bit is, oh yeah, they did their own little bonus assignment. Booze at. We're not gonna look through that. It might be maybe more suggestive than we wanna have. But what we will do is we will look through the follow along finale because I try to encourage every follow along artist who had been so active and so productive and making amazing stuff for us every single day. And we looked at them on stream each day, but uh, for the sake of this recap video, I'm just going to be sharing the uh, follow along finale channel, which just has everyone basically sharing their favorite art piece they made, as well as maybe a collage of all the stuff they did, if they did every single assignment. I think there's probably at least 50 people that did every single assignment, maybe like 100 when you count all the saplings and cadets and everything. It's probably close to 100 people that did all 31 assignments, technically. You can say 32 if you include the cadet. So that's a lot. That's a crazy amount. But let's take a look at some of the amazing art that was made from some of our follow-alongs. So let's see. We got Sage Dragon here. Uh, we got Momo Fenrix, who enjoyed their fluffy dinosaur. Oh, no. Animations are so slow to load. They also kind of shifted their cadet into this little moth creature. Luca has this one. Uh, Benjamin 
I can't even begin to describe all the chaos that was happening in the follow-alongs, but Benjamin made a full-on poem every single day of uh, Chroma Core, so that was fun to read. Pieces did absolutely amazing, insane art. Definitely one of my top five follow-alongs for this year. Times Shark, a cooking shark. Uh, that was a great piece, uh, a great piece movie poster. And honestly, all of their stuff they did, let me just take a moment, go to this board if you can, because some of the stuff you'll see in here is just mind boggling in how good it is. Jay Pauly, also a familiar name, doing tons and tons of work. Lemon Z, doing traditional, love to see it. Uh, there were probably like, I don't know, maybe like 10 people that did traditional every single day, this whole entire assignment. Sako did Mad Hatter art every single day, traditionally too. I looked forward to that each day. Pandofsky, definitely someone who did a lot of great stuff. Uh, very strong art there. Novahedron definitely came through clutch in some of those, uh, the little team up things, but loved this mushroom royalty and really some strong stuff in there. So gotta love Novahedron, definitely making amazing art. Had three different cadets even, so they're just stacking up tons of art from this past month. Adam Strawberry, it was great seeing them. Uh, they made a ton of good stuff as well. Really liked this one right there. We had Shira Web. I'll just show, I don't know if I wanna show collages or just their individual pieces, but there's so many great artists to share. Uh, Vagabonds there, Shira, a lot of good stuff there. Pokey Raccoon, giving us some stuff. Koki, uh, I can't play all these animations, but we'll just take a look at some of the collages. Just check out the board also. Uh, Steffels, very cute. We actually turned these into emojis for the board now. So thank you, Steffels, for contributing those amazing things. Micah, great to see that. That's we had. It. That's not me. That's someone else. Um, but some good art there. It was that by Midnight People. Okay. Uh, indigo, a little indigo. Definitely a amazing artist. This piece alone is like delightful. Time Qualm, really good there. <laughs> um, so a lot of fun stuff with that. Ant General doing some good stuff. Cyberpunk Palm Springs. Surprised, not many people's favorite, but um, they did a good job on that one. Matt Sucks, I, I, I feel weird every time I say their name, um, but they did a lot of good stuff. A zombie Fly, ooh, that is a great graffiti art. Nicely done, zombie fly. Potane, pot Anne. I think it's, I don't know why I said it like that. Pot Anne, a great fan art of De Haf's character there. Really like that. Time Lost, lovely piece. We had Hugh Mab, who did a ton of great ones. Really like this one, honestly. Great use of color and like subtle, very subtle details going on in this one. Um, but beautiful piece. It was the water droplets hanging in the air. Uh, so great job by Humab. Zenith, also going for the water droplets. Uh, very cool stuff there. Cornelius, another just crazy mix of tradition. A lot of watercolor too. So what a, what a great little portfolio of images to have after one month. Joan Singh Simba, giving us a little bit of a giant collage piece, not collage. Just a, you know, illustration thing. Cohen, giving us all kinds of good stuff there. Uh, love to see Cohen. Three years in a row, all prompts. Great to see. Voland, Voland, Voland. I don't know how to say it properly. Absolutely killed it with some of the sequential art they made. It's hard to get a good look at all of them in this format, but Voland did some just insanely good stuff. Cloudy73, another one of my top five follow-alongs of the year. Cloudy73 is just ridiculously good. I mean, look at this piece. Look at all these pieces. They're all insanely good. So definitely one of my new favorite follow-along artists that I've really been enjoying this year. We had Hirano. This looks lovely. Great explosion there. Uh, Steg, another familiar name, doing some cool stuff. Steg's really been 
dialing it up with the industrial design. Sadly, not too much industrial design this year, but still really bringing it with some great art. Suisen Scaris, looking, this is so creepy. Every time I look at this one, I'm feeling like slightly uneasy, but uh, I, I think that's good. We have a Lost Stranger, making some cool stuff in here. Good cool collages. Uh, Ant, Ant did some amazing work. Definitely a very, very strong follow along. Love that industrial design. And honestly, their, their cadet, their follow alongs, um, probably in my top five, actually. Uh, definitely some of the greatest follow alongs going on. So Ant, great job. MK, their cadet was wonderful. Uh, they didn't get to do as many as they might have wanted, but definitely some great ones going on in there. So Tofu looks like probably got all of them. Second year with all prompts done. Well done, So Tofu. Some good fan art stuff as well. Uh, Wishy Isopod. It's a good Dryad Lantern. Love that piece. Michael YYY also did a lot of amazing follow alongs. So great job, Michael. Hannah had a great cadet as well as some great follow alongs, especially this herding cats one, which I mean, just look at it. It's beautiful. Kana, 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 probably Kana. And then special huge shout out to one of our absolute favorites this year. One of the standout artists of this year was Crafty Jellyfish who did no joke here, an embroidery piece for every single day of Chromacore. Just look at this. Just look at all this thread being put through uh, to make all of this amazing stuff. They even had an animation, uh, an embroidery animation, um, and all kinds of fun pieces. So uh, this is ridiculous. If you like embroidery, um, be sure, be sure to check out Crafty Jellyfish. Skullpel did some wonderful uh, work this year as well. Fudge Cake Devil, a familiar name, also doing some great stuff this year. Uh, Apricot Soup did ridiculous stuff. Kenzaria uh, looking great. Boone as well. Third year keeping up the streak. Dang, another third year all prompt regular. Uh, people are just gonna have full, complete portfolios from every single year. Rimo, some good pieces here. Really strong one there. Really nice values here. So great colors, great values. Uh, anime Boy Stars. The favorite thing they made uh, is worth looking at because they did some untraditional, traditional work. Uh, in terms of making an actual little plushie of Filbert, the fluffiest dinosaur. They also did some cosplay. They did some embroidery. They did some traditional, some digital, just a little bit of everything, you know, just mixing it all around. But we also had Martin with a good chunk of the, all of the uh, images done. Peter doing some cool stuff here. Uh, Adam Lover, another great artist. I love this. This is delightful. A beautiful little tribute to the winners there. Uh, of course, you got to have an Urkel. You got to have a carrot person. Some of our fan favorite little goobers this year. Shamalu, the creator of carrot person. You got to love Shamalu. Shamalu brings me so much joy. That would be an understatement. I absolutely look forward to Shamalu's pieces every single day every single chroma core because carrot person is so iconic and they add so much lore. It's like sub lore, not in my own little lore that I make, but basically a other lore of carrot person going through chroma core. Every single year, I'm enjoying it so immensely. Next year, you can see grim carrot person versus chibi carrot person. Uh, there's just so much, there's so much to follow just in the lore of Carrot Person that I couldn't even begin to go through it. We had Lazoro, Strivek, uh, yeah, Strivek's really good as well. Look at that piece. Um, Lazoro doing some good stuff as well. We had Maxi, cool, little mix of traditional with some digital stuff thrown in. Uh, those are looking pretty nice, I'd say. Uh, Sad Frog, all 30 assignments done. Third year of doing every single prompt. 
Dang. Sad Frog, I always feel bad because Sad Frog's always right on the border of getting picked for the last like three years. But they do some amazing stuff. I absolutely love this one, by the way. It's so good. We had Val uh, doing fan art of Elodin, everyone's favorite. Sake Carp doing a lot of, a lot of good filberts going on. Uh, like that. Loka, good collage, good art going on there. Biped, also getting all the good stuff in. Uh, definitely like this piece for the lighting and everything. Had a really strong sense of light in that one. Uh, Star Gecko, doing, doing some great stuff this year. Ashi Adobo for their uh, Cadet Ribbit, which was a great cadet. It was definitely in my standout cadets. Uh, they had a nice little graffiti piece for that. Shucks, good stuff there. Some great art pieces. Really like seeing Shucks' stuff this year. Cray, Ray Steve, also great follow along. Uh, some really nice ones there too, not to gloss over them. There's just so much to look at. Some paper cuts did plenty of delightful stuff. Um, this is creepy. <laughs> I don't even want to click on it. It's too creepy for me. Johanna Bell, also a name I've seen improving a lot regularly. Really good stuff though. Mushroom royalty looking amazing. Mild here, making some cool stuff. Druid for Hire definitely did some very cool images this year. I love this victory piece. Very nice. Ronzu. I loved a lot of Ronzu stuff uh, and it had a nice cadet, but this is some great fan art of uh, another cadet. Then we had Lion Frog doing some cool stuff as well. <laughs> a little Mad Max unicorn. Gingerbread, who did, uh, I think all traditional, maybe one or two digital things, uh, but most importantly, did some traditional stop motion animation for a few of the entries, which I absolutely love seeing. They also did some cosplay early on. Joe Arts did a huge, you know, former Cadet Joe Arts, amazingly talented artist, did a giant set of traditional pieces this year, and they all looked beautiful. Um, some of my favorite follow alongs this year were definitely coming out of Joe Arts. Uh, so just really, really nice pieces by Joe Arts. Noodle Master doing a bunch of crazy stuff as well. That's very cool looking. Mulan, I think did everything this year, probably, maybe? Uh, definitely did a good chunk of them, if not all of them. So it was great to see. What's this? There's some little thing going on there. Um, so great stuff there by Mulan. Hofnar. Uh, do it did a ton of animations. Uh, I guess it's hard to you know combine all the animation stuff, but they were doing some really, really intense animations. You know, complex, intricate animating. Love to see it, Hofnar. Frost give us some good stuff. Yeah, Frost gave some amazing art. Every single day. Yalak, oof, Yalak, very talented artist. One of my favorite uh, kind of follow-alongs from previous times. And still one of my favorite cadet entries as well, but always doing just amazing art. Love to see it from Yalak. Uh, obviously they were instrumental in uh, one of the collabs for T-Ted. P. Wallig, uh, it's some good, it's a good pink we know. <laughs> Spokey, Spokey killed it this year. Uh, I love Spokey's art. It had so much personality, so much distinct style to it. Just a lot of really good stuff came from Spokey this year. We had Noxious, who has a very weird chaotic style, but made some really interesting, unique art. Sir Chen Chen, this piece is beautiful, have to say. Can't deny it, this piece, beautiful, beautiful Mad Max Medusa. Just overall, Sir Chen Chen, Amazing improvement, honestly. Just amazing growth, really strong art skills. Tatch, doing all the prompts. Nice, love to see it. Great artist there. Gerpo, why are you in here? Spoilers for gore and feet? We'll keep those spoilers. If you wanna see what's in there, just go check it out. Now we'll look at one of them. There's a whole bunch of good entries going on in there. Shady, They're, you're giving a gun to a raccoon. <laughs> Bro, that cringe. 
Yeah, some good art by them. I love that. Carrie Coy looking delightful. A nice little collage there. Uh, Mulan doing the animation thing. Uh, Brian Ho did uh, 10, but I definitely remember them because they were 10 solid entries. And uh, the graffiti looking great. You know, love a little animated graffiti. Bleef, another one of the amazing follow-alongs that I was definitely looking forward to regularly. They just have such a great sense of shape with all of their character art, um, as you can probably tell from this image. Uh, really great use of shapes, really nice sense of flow and everything. So great job, Bleef. Flan, 31 of 31, nice, well done. Um, so another full completion by Flan. Kira doing 19 of them this year, but some great art coming out of Kira. So well done there. Tardigrade uh, making a little bit of art. Didn't quite do all of them, but a great cadet. Hat Quantum made a lot of great art. So definitely Hat Quantum doing the collab, doing a bunch of cool stuff. Uh, really liked seeing Hat Quantum stuff. Really nice uh, collage this year. Uh, Fat Cat. Um, I guess Fat Cat just posting a handful of them, but man, I'm pretty sure Fat Cat did every assignment this year, despite being the winner last year, wasn't complete. Had to just come by and show everyone that Fat Cat deserved that victory by doing every single assignment and making them all look honestly amazing, just as amazing as last year. Like, look at all of these. These pixel art animations are just wild. They take a while to load because they're so good. It can't, Discord can't contain how good they are. So it can't even decide to load them apparently. Um, but yeah, just really great stuff all over the place. <laughs> uh, some more stuff with Kira, nicely done. Miss Falmore, Draw Inger. Um, Jelly Bear, I think did most of them. Uh, really cute piece there. So good, happy vibes coming off of Jelly Bear. Andre, of course, one of our favorite saplings this year, did a ton of cadet fan art. So let's take a look at some of those. Obviously, they got their own character. I love the way they draw all of them. So Hack Arts, Gerg, PK, Sunny Diego, Shum, um, just all of these Delightful pieces. Ari Kranz, Hume, Iris, Iris Russell, uh, Smick, Blah Blab, Drawkey, Camming. Like, just look at that style. Such a joy to be drawn by Andre, honestly. Uh, and such a joy to look at everything Andre makes. Check them out wherever you can. City Bell, just amazing. Look at all these talented people. Just doing crazy stuff every single time. Uh, Lucy Lou doing some good stuff there. Brioche, another regular name, doing some great, great uh, little images here. Here you got some stuff. Look, there's a giant Ahmed Al Dory in the background with a little uh, Steven Zapata action, some Ethan Becker, and even some Suli, our official bard of Chromacore. Suli represented in this little piece of art here. Uh, Allium Chocolate did a ton of great art this year as well, uh, even linking to their old stuff. Um, so great job by Allium. Soy Sauce, um, cool stuff there, cool fan art. Draw Key obviously was a lovely, lovely sapling this year. They still did a ton of the follow along stuff after they were pruned. Just amazing art, you know. The, the Sancho Panza, Don Quixote, Kalugo Tardigrade. Just, you know, perfect, a perfect touch. Lobster sauce, three years, 101 prompts on record. Well done, crazy amount of art, crazy growth. Uh, you love to see it. So looking forward to hopefully seeing some more of Lobster in the future. Speaking of absolutely amazing artists that are contributing so much, Mr. Green did so much delightful art for this. Um, just an absolute joy. Look at this piece. <laughs> Their cadet accidentally eating a chip while carrot person and a little bread guy even got the little Mountain Dew guy in there. Just all this stuff. You just love to see it. Um, so... 
amazing work by Mr. Green this year. Rimo, with some delightful stuff here. Uh, everyone has such wholesome, kind words to say too, which I really appreciate. I definitely read through all of them. First year of Chromacore for Renai, almost, they feel like someone that's been around regularly just with how well they kind of sunk into everything and how much amazing art they made. Rehander as well, amazing stuff here, good references. Delightful art, I absolutely love their little cadet, chibi cadet. Um, and all the art they made was extremely good and very much impressed by Rehanter. I'm glad they participated since they were just a lurker last year. So if you're a lurker, here's your sign. Participate next year. It's fun. Petchy doing some great uh, overall uh, little artwork this year. A lot of good stuff. Definitely another fan favorite. Sorry, I should have left that to play. <laughs> Just their little mouse cadet eating all the cheese, you know, lactose intolerant. <laughs> oh, wait, we can't. <laughs> they even. <laughs> okay, okay. Anyway, Squeebly Bop, lovely art here. Um, Blah Blab, one of our obviously saplings that got pruned, but nonetheless still making great stuff as a follow along. Love that piece. Uh, Witchy Veronica did some great art as well. Love that. Snarquilius, good little uh, collage right there. Taya ADX did some nice art for everything. Funky Pepe, not to be overlooked or ignored. Definitely one of my top five follow-alongs for probably three years running. <laughs> Even though all they did the first year was just kill one of the cadets. A ridiculous talent. One of my great joys every year is watching Funky Pepe make stuff. Uh, definitely please follow them on Instagram, at least. Funky Pepe. These are all animations. I guess that's the thing worth pointing out. They look like amazing pieces of art right here when you just glance at them. But each one of these is like a ridiculous animation. And I mean ridiculous. Uh, if I just play one of them. Just look at this. This is just for the Mad Max mythology. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Funky Pepe is an art god and every company in the video game industry should be fighting for Funky Pepe to work for them. Also, Jeb Cosby, very strong. Third year of doing all the prompts. I love Jeb Cosby stuff. It's also kind of like in this weird realm of being kind of very cute, but also making me very happy and sometimes being a little creepy, but mostly just adorable, happy, delightful art and knows how to hit emotions too. Ronin Guts, great to see again, a familiar name. Uh, Sophia Sna, great, great stuff by them. Uh, Pokeyal, what, you didn't, you're supposed to upload stuff. Well, just trust me, Pokeyal made some great art. Noir did some lovely little uh, images of all the fan art stuff, little tribute pieces, as well as some good stuff. <laughs> all right. All right. This is great stuff by Noir. That's just, I'm giving you tastes of the type of nonsense that's going on inside of here. But obviously this is just the people who had a chance to post in this channel, but there were also many, many, many other amazing follow-alongs as well. So aside from the contest, the contest is one big part of Chromacore, but it's not the main part of Chromacore because honestly, it's the community, the coming together of so many artists that really makes it what it is. So I guess to switch back and close things out because we've looked at the follow-alongs, we've looked at all the stuff. The last thing I really want to mention actually, wait, one more moment, hold on. Let's mention this real fast. Now there's a channel here on Chromacore. Obviously, Elodin was a sapling, went quite far. Uh, but at the top of the Chromacore server, you'll see a channel that says Elodin Anime Season 1 Sub. I highly recommend you enjoy looking through these and i promise you all of these are ridiculously entertaining and amazing aside from that i just want to yeah i mentioned that this is all about community but it's really just the coming together of a community that makes it all worth doing because it's a lot of work staying home every single night to make sure i can stream every single day which can be rough 
um, but just doing it because I love it. It's worth it because of how great the community is. So thank you so much every single year. That's four years in a row of this amazing community. And there will only be another six years of Chroma Core because I'm not going to do it forever. We're doing it for the 2020s. So uh, definitely, definitely thank you to everyone that participated. Thank you for watching this video. I know a lot of you watching are probably just the same as the participants. Um, but if you're just watching this as an outsider, I hope you enjoyed seeing all of this art, seeing all of this chaos, all of the festivities. Let's close out with that video that I mentioned earlier, that little collaboration video of all of the cadets and saplings and stuff made by Naka and other people that helped out. Credits are in the end of the video, and I look forward to seeing you all again next year for the next Chroma Core. In the meantime, I gotta get back to making YouTube videos.